two redshirt freshman quarterbacks do on a big stage here on homecoming. Trey Lance for North Dakota State, Will McElvain for Northern Iowa. Both have been very dynamic, scrambling outside the pocket, keeping plays alive. And I think the legs of each quarterback is going to be equally as important as their ability to throw the ball and keep plays alive and even run for important first downs on third down conversions. Well, my final thought is on a guy who McElvain is going to want to hit. He's hit uh, Deion McShane the most of any other receiver, but he is five foot nine, 155 pounds, and primarily will be guarded by Jabril Cox, the linebacker today. He's 6'3", 235. Now, McShane was an FBS track recruit, so how's the linebacker going to stay, uh, and stay with him? Well, we all know that Cox is the best athlete the Bison have. That will be a very fun one to watch. Those two go at it today. Thank you guys. We have spent most of the show talking about Northern Iowa's defense and how North Dakota State and Northern Iowa could be a good game on the defensive side of the ball, but this game is about Northern Iowa's offense. They're 98th in the country in offense. They've been super inconsistent. If they're going to get it done today, they need to find some offense. I just don't know where that comes from. Kyle? Yeah, hey, thanks, Ryan. I completely agree with you. Look, I think this is going to be a closer game than it really should be. I think Northern Iowa plays well in the Fargo Dome. This is a place where they're not really intimidated. That's one team that can actually say that in the Valley. However, I think it, I think it will be close early on because of Northern Iowa's run defense. I think they'll make it a little bit tough on NDSU's offense just because of how stingy they are up front. But ultimately, I just don't see them having enough offensively, and I, I see NDSU running away with this game late. Yeah, I completely agree with Kyle. I think this is NDSU uh, all the way. Uh, definitely a, a huge Bison win here today. Everybody's super quiet because Kyle was just actually flipping the coin, and I don't know if he won it for the Bison or not. But that, Kyle, good job, our buddy. You gave away the TV magic, Alex. Yeah, we did give away the TV magic. No, you gave away the oh, TV magic. Sorry, yeah, that's there what you I go. did. There's yeah, Kyle. Kyle Emanuel, honorary captain today for the Bison <laughs> here on Homecoming. Uh, a great opportunity. Definitely lost. <laughs> he definitely. lost the we, toss. We practiced that quite a bit. Let's pass this up to the booth to Brian Jean and Lee Timmerman for today's call. All right, thanks so much, Beth. Alex, and a special moment for Kyle Emanuel as well, coming back uh, to Fargo. Proud to and have then Beth and Alex are ragging show. on him for losing the <laughs> That's what part, part of the fun is, yeah. LT, is when it comes down to it. Uh, but it is starting to fill in. It is starting to feel now like the atmosphere might be okay here today. Oh, I think so. I think NDSU's fans, they understand that they have an opportunity to help their team. It's worked in the past uh, against teams uh, in here, and especially first-time quarterbacks have had a tendency to struggle here. Coach Farley talked about uh, that would be one of the big adjustments that McIlvain would have to deal with. He says, uh, in fact, here's the, the quote I wrote down. He says, it's so much uh, different playing there because of uh, the, the crowd and the crowd noise and that the young man is going to have to deal with it. And he won't understand it until the first drive of the game. And there are certainly some ties on the coaching staff. Matt Entz, a former assistant at Northern Iowa, defensive coordinator David Braun came over from Northern Iowa after spending the last couple of years on the Panther staff as the defensive line coach. And the one thing we talked about Coach Braun with is he knows their roster well because he had some special teams responsibilities. So that certainly helps in game planning on both sides of the ball. The Bison will have the football first. Doing the honors, Matthew Cook, a true freshman out of Cedar Falls, Iowa, a walk-on who's been a real pleasant surprise. Nine of nine in field goals, including a 50-yarder at Iowa State. He boots this one away to the corner. Ty Brooks puts on the brakes at his two. To the 10, to the 20, and Brooks takes a pretty good shot at the 23-yard line and finally wrapped up on the play by Alfonso Soko and North Dakota State on offense at the 23. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for North Dakota State, sponsored by Shields. Trey Lance, Marshall, Minnesota. Dylan Radins, Becker, Minnesota. Nash Jensen, Austin, Minnesota. Carson Shooting, Roll, North Dakota. Zach Johnson, Spring Lake Park, Minnesota. Cordell Volson, Belfort, North Dakota. Ben Ellison, Pauley, Minnesota. Aaron Wallstrom, Vergas, Minnesota. Cy Brooks, Fargo, North Dakota. Christian Watson, Tampa, Florida. Phoenix Sproles, New Hope, Minnesota. Adam Cofield, a four-yard gain on first down. North Dakota State going to try to control that middle early, and the number one guy they have to control is Jared Brinkman, a junior 5'11", 290 out of Iowa City. 
It'll be very similar duties on what the, the center and guards had to do last week against Ridgeway at Illinois State. Much of the same things carry over against Brinkman. He's the nose tackle. He's a junior, 290 pounds, 5'11". Trey Lance is going to keep it up the middle, and Lance K stays on his feet and has a first down up to the 37-yard line before he is finally wrapped up on the play by Ellerson Smith. Lance has not done a ton of running the last couple of weeks, but when he's been called upon, he's been delivering. It's been more of a specialty type of a situation with Lance in the running game. Today, probably more a called and designed runs for him between the 20s. Let's take a look at his numbers, quarterback comparison, sponsored by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by beef farmers and ranchers. How about the efficiency as well for Lance? 12 of 15 last week, dropping it off in the flat. Ty Brooks tripped up by Bryce Flater after a gain of nine up to the 46-yard line. Well, it's called FIB, formation into the boundary. We'll look for the bison if the numbers and count is right for Trey Lance to do more plays into the boundary because a guy like Bryce Flater, who doesn't like to leave the box, who is he guarding on that play? He was guarding the running back. That is an advantageous uh, a, a setup for NDSU. Stretch play this time. Going to be close to a first down, but brought down short. Going to have to help defensively. There was Omar Brown, the freshman corner out of Minneapolis. The Northern Iowa defensive unit, also sponsored by Shields. Chris Kalarvik, a guy that missed last season because of an injury situation. Austin Evans was a defensive back. He's been moved into a linebacker role. Xavier Williams, an all-valley corner. And then Butcher, Brinkman, Smith, and Thomas, the four up front. Very good up front, Northern Iowa. Third and one. Power game, Cofield needed a yard. He got what he needed up to the 48, and that'll move the chains. Yep. Emerson Smith is an interesting guy when you look <laughs> at him. We were just saw him, we see him warming up without pads. He looks like he should be playing basketball for Ben Jacobson at UNI. 6'7", kind of a slim 230, but plays with tremendous bend and has Really good explosion off the edge. But did you see who the Bison just moved right there? Number 16, that's Smith. NDSU thinks they can run at him today and gain some things in the on the ground because he is only 230. Lance play action. Sproles across the middle. Diving catch at the 34-yard line. Well, we talked about Lance, LT. 74% on the season, and he's right on target here. Right up the seam, you're picking on getting behind the linebackers and right in front of the safeties. Tenth catch of the year for Phoenix Sproles. Of course, his first touchdown catch was a beauty. Remember that one at Target Field, kind of laying out, diving? So if you're going to dive for the ball, there's a good chance he's going to come up with it. Kobe Johnson in a tailback, and he'll get the carry here on first and ten. And Northern Iowa does a nice job stringing that thing out. And it was Smith getting up field, bubbling it out in a loss of one. Austin Evans, the outside linebacker, has a sack and an interception this year for the Panthers. But so far on the ground game, number 16 right here, that's a guy who is, when it comes to rushing the quarterback, he's the best in the FCS in sacks so far this year. But the Bison want to run at him, and they've been successful at him so far. Play action for Lance. Downfield, man open, wide open in the end zone. Touchdown. Phoenix rolls. You can see that open up before Lance even turned around with the ball. Sproles had a blow. I don't know who was supposed to get to him at the line of scrimmage, but nobody did. He was open on the back seam. The Bison went uh, three verticals. No one even close on that half of the field looking at Phoenix Sproles. Wide open, good read by the freshman quarterback. Give him another touchdown pass. North Dakota State getting in that two-point formation, and Hendricks is going to run it in for two. Matt Entz has to like the way his team has come right out of the gates here and grab the momentum. I like the mix. It was a nice mix on that opening drive, too. Some, some, uh, some solid rushes. Uh, you, you got an isolation on a linebacker in the passing game, and then 
just has to be a blown coverage for Coach Farley to, to let Sproles be that wide open. Well, Trey Lance came into this game with a quarterback rating of 204.7, which is number one in the FCS. He now has his 13th touchdown pass on the season. He has yet to throw an interception, and Phoenix Sproles has the second of the season, third of his career on the 36-yard strike. Nodak Insurance Company replay, an inside release on Sproles. He was just let go. Safety's trying to catch back up. No chance to do that. That's a relatively easy read. And, a, and I tell you, I'll, I'll bet to you when Lance, before, as soon as he let go of the ball, three rotations out of his hand, he was smiling because he knew he was that wide open. Time for another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Fair catch made by Trevor Allen in the end zone, and Northern Iowa's first possession will start at the 25-yard line. Boy, that was a beautiful drive by North Dakota State. You had mentioned the variety that we had seen. Eight plays, 77 yards, and 357. Let's take a look at the North Dakota State defense, sponsored by Shields. Logan McCormick, Kimberly, Wisconsin. Cole Karch, Germantown, Wisconsin. Jack Darnell, Champlin, Minnesota. Derek Tuska, Warner, South Dakota. Aaron Markadell, Arthur, California. Jackson Hanky, Park Hill, North Dakota. Jabril Cox, Kansas City, Missouri. Marquis Bridges, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Michael Tuxi, Indianapolis, Indiana. James Hendricks, Bemidji, Minnesota. Josh Hayes, Lakeland, Florida. Trevor Allen, his first carry for Northern Iowa. 74 yards and a touchdown last week against Youngstown State. Dropped for a two-yard gain. We've already see James Kayser come in and play some Will Linebacker. That's been something that Defensive coordinator David Braun continues to toy with here. Bison playing the nickel right now. McIlvain out of the shotgun. He's going to take a shot deep. Weston made the adjustment but could not hang on to the football. Pretty good coverage from Josh Hayes, but Weston, one of those guys that is a big play receiver. He leads the Valley with 381 receiving yards and four touchdowns this season. For the guy on the other side, too, Jalen James is also a big receiver that McIlvain will go to in a 50-50 ball situation. Here are the numbers for McIlvain. Just the one interception, eight touchdowns, sponsored by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by Beef Farmers and Ranchers. He's off to a pretty good start, but sometimes we'll play a little backyard football. We'll keep plays alive with his legs and throw it downfield. Third and eight here for the redshirt freshman. McIlvain fires across the middle high and going up to make the catch is number 37, Aaron Graham, the senior out of Kansas City, and that will move the chains for the Panthers. Fairly small window that he crams that one in. Nodak Insurance Company replay. This will be a pretty good look at it. It's going to go right over the dropping linebacker, uh, Hanky, and in front of the safety. Hayes on a free release to the inside. It's kind of what the Bison were given, and the Panthers connected. Little counter action now to Allen, and he slips down. After a gain of one, Josh Hayes coming in from his corner spot. Tony Pierce really smashed down hard from his defensive end position, number 90 for the Bison, and uh, just threw the timing of that play off just a little bit because uh, the Panthers are trying to get a couple of pullers out in front of it. McIlvain, a clean pocket firing again, and Jalen James makes the reception inside Bison territory, and he bolts up field to the 37-yard line. So a couple of nice passing plays here for the Panthers to get in Bison territory. Yeah. McIlvain started as, as a walk-on, but by, at the end of last year, he was already on scholarship, so they had a pretty good idea he was going to win the job. Here is the starting lineup, sponsored by Shields. Jaden Scott in a tight end. The top two tight ends for you and I are hurt. Jordan Scott Brown, known as the top offensive lineman. A little RPO action there for you and I. And Graham makes his second reception and gains nine on first down. Exactly what it was. RPO stands for run, pass, option. So McIlvain does not know where the ball's going to go before the play starts. The defense is going to dictate where he goes with it. The run wasn't there. He pulled it, fired it to the outside. You and I continuing to go no huddle here and pick up the tempo. Not a lot of room, but enough for a first down as Tyler Hoosman gets his first carry of the day to the 25-yard line. 
Logan McCormick in on the tackle. Josh Hayes has to hit to the sideline after he lost his helmet. Now, you and I generally has a three running back rotation. Allen's carried it, Hoosman's carried it, and we'll also see Alfonso Soko into the game at times today as well. Those are the three guys that have carried the ball this year outside of quarterback keeps for you and I. McElvain flushed out, Karch giving chase, and McElvain wisely just throws it away. That'll bring up second and ten. That's one extra thing that Cole Karch brings to the table that most defensive tackles don't. He's got a burst of speed. Remember, he came here as a defensive end, and he can move those feet pretty well. Was able to get some size, move inside, and then most of the time a quarterback will just pull away from a defensive uh, tackle or nose guard, but not in that particular instance because Karch has good wheels. That's one area McElveen will get in trouble sometimes is hanging on to the football too long, but he's able to get rid of it there. Not a lot of room initially up the middle. Good job by James Kayser coming in to take down Trevor Allen for maybe a half yard gain. We talked about Cole Karch. Ran into him downstairs on Tuesday and he was eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And I said, Cole, I said, what are you doing? He goes, well, I have to eat about four of these a day just to keep my weight up to 270. He goes, when I'm not hungry, I still have to keep eating. Third and long for you and I. Empty and five wide. Bison bringing pressure. Jabril Cox giving chase. McElveen gets rid of it, but he is off target looking for Trevor Allen. Incomplete will bring up fourth down. Show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and debit card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. I was going to say, Jabril Cox just gave up on the coverage and used the speed. He was not touched. There was no running back in the backfield to try to pick him up, which allowed him a free release on the quarterback. Matthew Cook on for a 42-yard attempt. He has already made three field goals over 40 yards this season. And Cook puts a boot to it. It is no good. His first miss of the season. Nine of nine coming in, but is wide to the right. And you and I ends up with nothing. 7.04 to go in the first quarter. North Dakota State leads 8-0 on the A Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. Time now for the Gate City Bank Fan Cam. Send us your Homer Watch Party picks to Fan Cam Your Cam, and we'll show them in the fourth quarter. That is FanCamYourCam.com. Trey Lance and another keeper has good yardage. Up to the 38-yard line, gain of 13. One of the things the Bison wanted to see, and we've talked about Ellerson Smith, is how much Smith wanted to get involved in the running game, especially through the A-gap. That time, he was a little plated, a little bit soft. The Bison took advantage, a real nice pull from uh, 68, the uh, preseason All-American, Zach Johnson up front. Lance already 23 rushing yards in addition to the 62 passing yards. He will throw it here, and that ball is batted up in the air, and it drops harmlessly. I believe at the 28-yard line, there's finally the incompletion signal made by the official. Trying to look for a little quick hitter on the uh, on the outside, off to his left. The defense is right. Bison tried to run a little X pattern and a little scrub pattern, but nobody was able to, or the Panthers were able to get through it cleanly, and Lance's first two reads were taken away. And plus it was a short drop, so he knew that he was running out of time. Rolls in motion. Inside give to Ty Brooks. Boy, you and I all over that play, and it's Smith again diving inside for a loss of one. Well, that's what I was talking about. The, on the quarterback run, Smith was really soft on it. Nodak Insurance Company replay. This will come right at you. 16 comes down. This time being very aggressive in the run game, so maybe an adjustment that you and I made within this drive. Well, Ever Ellerson Smith in his last eight games, 12 and a half sacks, 16 tackles for loss coming in. That's very all. Very disruptive. What else has he done? <laughs> <laughs> he 
You and I trying to bring some pressure. Lance squeaks away, throwing on the run, looking for Christian Watson. But good coverage on the play there from Roosevelt Lawrence, who missed last week's game against Youngstown State, and the Bison will have to punt it away. Let's pause for a quick message from Tobolt Seed. Tobolt Seed offers the latest in seed cleaning technology to ensure your crop's full potential. Tobolt Seed also contracts, produces, and supplies the finest quality non-GMO soybeans to food manufacturers around the globe. Tobolt Seed, grow with us. Garrett Wegner on for his first punt of the day. Wegner, a high, oh, nice high, deep punt. Drive the return man all the way back to his own 12-yard line. Fair catch. He was made by Xavier Williams, and you and I backed up to his own 13-yard line for second possession, trailing 8-0 on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard back in a moment. All right, boys and fans, get up and get up. 5.38 to go in the first quarter. North Dakota State leading 8-0. Northern Iowa's second offensive possession starts from the 13. McIlvain. Plenty of time in the pocket, now going to unload it. Behind his intended man, and it drops incomplete. Jalen James trying to make the adjustment, and James wanting a flag with Hayes in coverage. And no flag comes. Nodak Insurance Company replay. McIlvain's going to stand in here and take a pretty good hit, but this is a pass pattern that takes a very long time to develop. It was a left side pattern across all the way across the field to the outside hash on the other side. And Hay is able to win the uh, the battle of the hands when the ball got there. McIlvain firing on the slant. James Hendricks in there to break it up. James again, the intended target, will bring up third and long. That play has been so successful this year for you and I. That that RPO look or, or a zone read look into the slant. Here's what we mean. He's going to on the. Uh, the replay fakes the run and then you fire the slant James the safety reads it comes down hard and what NDSU safeties and D-backs have done so well this year get in the proper position to have their lead hand knock the ball away Allen in motion McIlvain hits is the ball live no incomplete was waiting for an official to make a signal as Jabril Cox came hard on the blitz again and a three and out for the Panthers. Nodak Insurance Company replay. The Panthers are trying to catch the Bison in a screen game. Here comes Jabril Cox, gets a hand on him, but about half the Bison went uh, for the, uh, the quarterback. The other half read the screen very, very well. There was no place for that ball to go at all, and we've seen the athleticism and the speed of Jabril Cox a couple of times coming on blitzes. Northern Iowa will boot this one away. Zach Kibion, low wobbler. They'll take a Northern Iowa hop at the 41 and then come to a stop at the 43 yard line. So North Dakota State, great field position, leading 8 0 when we come back to the Fargo Dome. North Dakota State set up on a short field here. 44 yard line leading 8 0. Brooks, patient run, stays on his feet, finally banged down by a couple of Panthers after a gain of four to the 40 yard line. Christian Jagan getting in on that stop for UNI. Nash Jagen. Jensen with a fine job on Tim Butcher, number 94. That was a pretty good battle between those two, and Jensen won it. <laughs> Jagan's an interesting guy, too. He was a running back. A couple years ago before that was a wide receiver, now a safety. Malstrom the fullback here and will lead the way for Ty Brooks. Bouncing it out, cutting it up. Brooks almost stuck away. Austin Evans makes the tackle, but Brooks has enough for a first down to the 32-yard line. Great job by Noah Gindorf setting the edge. Buying, building, or refinancing. Start with a Gate City Bank Blue Standard pre-approval and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCity.Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Bison continue to run toward Smith's side. Wherever he's been setting up, NDSU has a physical advantage in the run game, and it's been working. 
Cofield finding a crease in a hole. Roosevelt Lawrence may have saved a touchdown. Still a pickup of four yards. That was well blocked on the left side. Oh, beautiful slant, really smashing down the whole right side of that Bison offensive line. Zach Johnson, Cordell Bolson, they just swallowed up these guys heading this way. And so the only guy left, there was number one. If he doesn't make that tackle, it is a touchdown. So you're right, Lawrence definitely saved six points. Lawrence, again, didn't miss last week. Able to come back from injury. Lance is going to keep it again through a hole. Lance. He has taken him down again by Lawrence. Maybe a half yard short of a first down will bring up third and short. This one a more difficult tackle from Roosevelt because he was he was uh, had Phoenix Sproles, one of the better wide receiver blockers on him, and he was able to play off that block. And I believe it was a concussion system uh, symptom thing for Lawrence and the reason he was held out last week. Senior defensive back from Tampa, Florida, played a couple of years at Iowa Central Community College. Third and very short for North Dakota State. The Bison over 54% this season. Third down, and Cofield has it. Tiptoeing around a man and then stacked up across the 20 at the 19-yard line. That'll be enough to move the chains. Coming into this game, Cofield leading the team in rushing attempts. He's kind of been a workhorse, especially in those short yardage situations. Yeah, his finish is... I mean, the Bison, all the Bison running backs are pretty good at him, but I think he's the best at keeping his pad level in, in high contact situations in the proper spot, the proper lean to absorb those blows and keep going forward. Lance puts Babbage in motion, and now a play action. Lance is going to go to the end zone. Watson! Did he get a foot down? Yep. Yes! Touchdown! seen Christian Watson emerge this year. Nodak Insurance Company replay back of the end zone. He had the tunnel screen. Beautiful run last week for the touchdown. There's that one right foot goes down and the Bison score six. Christian Watson had his first career touchdown reception last week against Illinois State and now has his second early here in the contest against Northern Iowa. Beautiful throw from Lance. And last week was that 45 yard catch and then run. Croso will come in. Griffin Croso continues to be perfect. An extra points now. A 25 out of 25 in the young career for the true freshman out of Powell, Ohio. Well, the last decade or so, what just happened there is what NDSU has been so good at. Your defense gives your offense a short field, and when the Bison have a short field, they make their opponents pay. This time, it's a seven-pointer. Well, North Dakota State coming into this game, LT. One of only two teams that rank in the top ten in both third down offense percentage and third down defensive percentage. <laughs> and it's because of how efficient they are in all phases, and you see it right there. Yep, college ball, remember, you only need one foot down in bounds. Watson makes the catch, has his right foot come down, and it's high fives and smiles time. 23 possessions, 18 touchdowns now in the red zone for North Dakota State. Six plays, 44 yards as Watson hauls it in from 19 yards out. And the touchdown stat just keeps getting wider and wider. NDSU now has outscored their opponents only in touchdowns, 29 to five. Sometimes goes overlooked, but North Dakota State is 11th in the FCS in total offense. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. They get about the 19 yard line made. Special teams tackle. Looked like that was with Darsik, Julian Wadarsik, the true freshman coming in to make the tackle. Talk about a stuck together true freshman. Wadarsik, 6'3, 202 out of Naperville. Yeah, Wadarsik, uh, Kobe Johnson, a couple of freshmen. Here. They're not, the Bison are not playing with this four game rule with these guys. They're playing every game, they're playing all year long. Wadarsik for his. Uh, ability on special teams is why there is not a shirt on him this year. Northern Iowa bunching things up now in the line of scrimmage on first down. Allen met in the hole. 
falls ahead for a gain of two. Cole Karch was the first man there for North Dakota State. So it was Logan McCormick in there to help as well. But I really like on the play, Nick Ellis, number 71. He's a junior listed for 325 pounds. Well, he's going up against Derek Tuska. Tuska has to make sure, as they say, set the edge. Don't allow that to bounce out, force it inside. He took on the big 325 guy, and the play went right back to where the Bison had Phil. McIlvain under pressure again, trying to get away, and he can't. Tuska finished him off, had some help from his friends, and Karch was also in there to put the heat on. A little bit of tighter space, but similar to a sack that Tuska had last week against Brady Davis, where he forces him to the outside. The quarterback thinks, hey, I can escape that way, and Tuska is right there to make the sack once again. He is in the top 10 in the FCS in total sacks. I know Smith has had a lot of the, the pub, but Derek Tuska, that's sack number six. Number 22 of his career, and it's third and long again. Bison bringing heat. McIlvain hanging in there. Weston is open, puts on the brakes, and makes the catch. Weston beating Josh Hayes down to the 39-yard line, and a big play there for Northern Iowa. Those types of plays are an absolute must for you and I to have success today. Nodak Mutual Insurance replay. You see Hayes lost his footing just a little bit before Josh can get back up. The ball's already there, and he's playing catch up. And McIlvain has a pretty good arm, and he's not afraid at all to put the ball into a 50-50 situation. 40-yard gain there on third and long. And that is the first carry of the day for Soko. Alfonso Soko, a sophomore out of Muscatine, Iowa. He's a handful of carries a game. Hoosman has more, and Allen has the most. Yeah, Soko, yeah, behind Allen's still going to get the most, but then Soko had a few more in the first couple of games. Hoosman's had a, a few more in the last couple of games, so they're kind of evening out those rush attempts. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. North Dakota State. Two touchdowns, two touchdown passes, one caught by Watson, one by Sproles, as Northern Iowa has driven inside North Dakota State territory for the second time here today. It is a winter wonderland outside. Folks have made their way where roads are open. And it's nice and toasty here in the Fargo Dome. 15 0 after one here on the KBLY Camp Wire Bison Television Network. Well, you talk about a desire to get to the quarterback. Check out Derek Tuska with a nice swim move, uses his speed to the outside, then a little scramble grill and a drill on his hands and knees, and he gets right back up into the base. And then you do the nice thing, you help McIlvain back up. Second and eight from the 38 for Northern Iowa. Deion McShane in motion, and he Pass. will make the catch. He's going to throw it. He's going to fire it downfield. It's intercepted. James Hendricks makes the pick. Down to the 46-yard line. Second of the season, 11th of his career. Nodak Insurance Company replay. I don't know what it looked like to the players, but from up here, it wasn't disguised as a as a uh, second pass or a, a wide or in this case, McShane throwing the ball, and uh, James Hendricks was not fooled on the play at all. James with his 11th career interception. They're coming at. Now, McIlvain's used to having somebody come at him, but look at it. <laughs> that's Cole Karchin. Or no, excuse me, that's Hanky out there putting the pressure on McShane, who has now thrown an interception. Well, the trickeration has did not work that time for Northern Iowa, and the buys a good field position again. Bouncing it outside, looking for something. He is Brooks, and he's able to find a little bit of daylight inside Northern Iowa territory and gains five yards. Having a few words with Tim Butcher afterwards. You can just tell on the feet from Machine that when he was catching that thing, he was setting up the throw. He was not worried about running after it. And I tell you, if you're going to try to trick James Hendricks, good luck. Yep, that's not going to work very often. Oh, uh -oh. Lukey lost the football and it's picked up by Chris Kalarvik. 
He's running back the other way, and Lamp trying to slow him down and takes him down at the 11-yard line. So North Dakota State gives it right back. Didn't look to me like Lutke actually got it in. No, it stayed on his, on his ribs. He was unable to get it in there. And then Kalarvik was run down by a guy who the deep, the uh, FBS people wanted to be a, <laughs> a defensive back, but well, that's the type of turnover, type of big sudden change play that the Panthers really, really need to hang with the Bison today. North Dakota State has not given up a touchdown in eight straight quarters. Northern Iowa, golden opportunity here. Play action for McIlvain, and he spins right into the waiting arms of Derek Tuska, his second sack of the game, and it's a loss of six. Well, Trevor Penning is finding out that you can't win the battle one-on-one -on -one against Tuska. I mean, he needs run. He needs to be helped in some form or fashion. But uh, you and I usually doesn't chip a lot. With their with their running backs, so maybe you got to put a tight end on that side. There is a tight end on that side now. McIlvain floating it up to Weston, who makes the catch in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Panthers! Well done by you and I. They were able to get uh, Hanky on one of their best receivers. So it's a it's a drop by Hanky, 52, trying to get back there, just can't get there in time. Makes a little skinny post move in front of the safety Hendricks, and the first touchdown scored uh, by the Panthers today. It's Isaiah Weston's fifth straight game with a touchdown reception as Cook comes on for the extra points. It is down, it is up, and it is good. And Northern Iowa takes advantage of the turnover. As McIlvain has his ninth touchdown pass of the season to Isaiah Weston. It's 15-7 early in the second quarter here at the Fargo Dome. Northern Iowa, big touchdown to answer. And goal within eight. Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kickoff the planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Ty Brooks from his own goal line had a long putt return last week against Illinois State and some room to maneuver here. He's able to get up to the 29-yard line, and it was the kicker, Matthew Cook, taking him down. So let's take a look at that last touchdown play for Northern Iowa. Did somebody move early here for the Panthers? Take a look. It just seemed like there was a little something at the beginning of that play, just maybe the right side of the offensive line. Hand came up just a hair early. Yep, right there. Tough to see in real time, but we have the, obviously, the luxury of having a replay. Yeah, it was a nice route. Very, very, very nice route. Bison continue to try to work the middle on Northern Iowa and a gain of three for Adam Copia. Bryce Flader coming in on that tackle for you and I. Flader, a guy that was not recruited very heavily at all. Coming in out of Grundy Center, Iowa, but he's the leading tackler for Northern Iowa coming into this game. I was talking with someone in uh, Cedar Falls this week, and they said the D2 schools thought that he was a walk-on, a style of, uh, of player. Lance firing out to Cofield. He makes the reception and dives ahead to the 40-yard line, enough for a North Dakota State first down. Evans makes the stop for UNI. Back insurance company replay. A little square out, and you get isolated on the outside linebacker. That's the field linebacker. Plays to the wide side of the field, Austin Evans. A little square out, and then a real good job again by Cofield getting those extra yards to pick up the first. Seventh reception on the season for Cofield. Also has a touchdown reception this season on that screen pass at Delaware a few weeks ago. Bison bringing in the beef here. As Dimitri Williams gets his first carry of the day, and Williams has been absent for the last month dealing with a groin injury and a chance to get back on the field here today on homecoming. 
First chance for Williams to play since the UND game. And three on the play. Brings up second and seven. Look at how tight that box is, though. There's a lot of white jerseys right there. Trying to run through a whole bunch of white jerseys is Ty Brooks, and he's still able to power ahead up to the 47 yard line and a gain of four will bring up third and three. Whether you're buying, building or refinancing, Gate City Bank home loans are locally approved, financed and serviced. Gate City Bank for a better way of life, member FDIC, equal housing lender. It just seems to me that it, the way the Panthers have to play so close and so tight in here, that something play action might open up a little bit deeper. I don't know if you do it on third and three, but Box is stacked. Lance is going to throw it, and it's caught by Sproles in the flat. Working on Xavier Williams had his helmet ripped off, and Sproles is still down on the far sideline. Xavier Williams, preseason All-American, and hands down, I think, the best defensive back that the Panthers have. He just got beat on a simple out. So they'll tend to Sproles, who's now up at least on a knee. And as they work on him and figure out the situation, he will step aside. 10.41 to go here in the second quarter. Buys it inside UNI territory, leading by eight. First and 10, North Dakota State from the Northern Iowa 47. Delta formation for the Bison, and Lance is going to keep it up the middle. And more room as the pile continues to get pushed ahead to the 40-yard line and a gain of seven. Number five, Trey Lance, the ball carrier. As an offense, you're always trying to put your defense or defensive players in conflict. And this is a formation, I think, that really puts pressure on the uh, inside linebackers of this Panther team. We talked about Flater a little bit earlier. Leading the team in tackles to this point in the season. Running formation for North Dakota State, and it's Cofield met right in the backfield, and he has stood up back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Another third down coming. And boy, Trey Lance's numbers on third down this season very good. 17 of 29 with 14 conversions on third down when he passes the football. Here you see Phoenix Sproles back in after getting checked out, having his helmet ripped off. He did jog off the field under his own power when we were away from break. Boy, three in the backfield here. Now nah, they'll motion out of it. Get the two tight ends to the top of the screen, and Lukey and Cofield is going to get it and follow a block up the middle. Cofield still on his feet. Finally wrapped up by Roosevelt Lawrence at the 27. And a good strong run there for the junior out of Missouri. That's three tackles now, I think, that Lawrence has made that has kept NDSU out of the end zone because Cofield, after he runs through that one tackle, is able to get his feet back under him in momentum. He might take it all the way. and offensive lines looking pretty good today though. Lance play action. Hit as he threw it and it falls harmlessly incomplete and it was Smith putting on the pressure again. That's what Ellerson Smith does best. Edge rush. He has athleticism in that uh, rushing game that uh, rushing from the end that most uh, guys don't and I heard coach Farley talking about him and he says it's his hips mm -hmm. he's able to sink down stay forward get around the corner so fast that tackles just can't keep up with him Brooks through a hole Brooks still driving ahead to the 15 down to the 14 yard line and a gain of 13 for Ty Brooks and the buys an over 100 yards rushing here in the first half Let's go down to Ryan Gellner for an internet first international bank and trust sideline report. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Just real quick on Phoenix Sproles, who you said is obviously back in the football game. A defender fell on him along the sideline when that helmet came off. That pushed his head into the turf. He's got a pretty good bruise on his left eye. Other than that, though, good to go. Brooks wrestled to the ground after gain of four more to the 10-yard line and Flater on that tackle getting up a little bit slowly. So we talked earlier about an FIB formation in the boundary. The Bison definitely have that. The wide guy on the outside, well, that was the right tackle Cordell Volson. So they was unbalanced left. They were running right at Smith, and that uh, was pretty good yardage. And then Nodak Insurance Company replay, and it looks like the Panthers have a player down at the about the 10 yard line. And it is Flater who was slow getting up and then he walked a couple of steps and dropped right back to the turf. Let's pause for a quick message from Shields. What's up Bison Nation? Carson Wentz here. I'll never forget those rivalry games against the University of Northern Iowa. We're going to really need all of you to show up, be loud, be proud, and go Bison. I think I'll forget what happened with 2015 with 35 seconds left. Wentz to Darius Shepard in the corner Shepherd. of this end zone where the Bison are driving. A comeback victory for NDSU. The Bison 25 and 4 at home in the last decade against top 10 teams. Not bad. Well, NDSU on that winning streak that they're on now, the, the 26 game winning streak. Of course, the record is also held by NDSU, but remember who stopped that? You and I. On well, the last time that Northern Iowa won here in Fargo, 2009. The series, ironically enough, is tied I at 26 26, and this is a 53rd meeting all time between these two, two programs. Mark Farley has been there for 19 years at Northern Iowa, 152 wins, which is the most in the history of the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Second and six. Lance trying to pick his way. And he is taken down and wrestled around by Jared Brinkman after a gain of one, maybe two yards to the eight. A high motor guy. Tyler Roll speaking very highly of him with us on Thursday about well, we have to handle him. The they Bison did. recruited him. I mean, and his brother. He's yeah. a 60 foot shot putter in high school, uh, state wrestling champion. NDSU thought it thought of him as an offensive lineman though. Lance waits, almost taken down by the ankles, and then getting ahead to the seven yard line, about two yards short of a first down. And decision time here for Matt Entz. And he's going to run the field goal team off. Well, the defense held, but I know Klarvik wasn't happy with himself because he thought he whiffed on that tackle a little bit, but uh, Rickman and company able to force the fourth down. Griffin throws on for a 25-yard attempt. Snap down, kick is up. And Trosa remains perfect in his young Bison career. Now seven of seven in field goal attempts. And NDSU extends the lead 18 to seven on the Eight Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. Bobcat scoring recap, 14 plays on that drive. Took nearly seven minutes off the clock as Griffin Trosa connects from 25 yards to extend the lead to 11. Bison continue their red zone success only once all year as NDSU not scored inside the 20. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff kickoff your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed and Wegner again boosts this one out of bounds. That's the third time he's done that now in the last two weeks. I don't know if you could read uh, Coach Entz. He just looked at him and said, what happened? Well, Coach, I kicked it out of bounds. <laughs> Kick out of bounds. Kicking team by rule the ball is placed at the 35 yard line first down and that is the first penalty of the game ironically enough between these two teams it's always physical and this is an officiating crew that has never been here before referee is Art Brown guys from New York Delaware Not the easiest place to get to this week. <laughs> it's been a little bit of a struggle. I know Terry, the replay man, was talking to him. He said they made it in this morning. Oh. You and I from the 35. 
And room to maneuver this time for Trevor Allen. Most room he's had today, a gain of nine to the 44-yard line. And until, and he comes up limping a little bit with an ankle issue, it appears. He got up slow a few times last week at home against Youngstown State, was able to gut through it, and he hobbles off. Up until that run, Northern Iowa had only had two rushing yards in this game. Soko wrapped up in the backfield, and he lost a yard. Matt Beagler was able to get penetration. Jackson Hankey also in on the stop with Jabril Cox. I think Beagler was the key to that because uh, the Panthers were pulling a guard. And Beagler got in there, shot his gap so fast, and blew the timing of the play up that the pulling guard had nobody to even get there because it was disrupted too early. Head end in motion is Jaden Scott. McIlvain flushed out. Fires on the run, and that ball is. I thought it skipped. And they are marking it at the 49 as a catch. Jalen James apparently makes a very nice catch, and of course, you and I will. Go quick. I thought it hit the turf, but and Matt Entz is going to call a timeout. Yeah. Matt Entz wants to call a timeout, so they take a look at this thing before you and I can snap it. Previous play pass is under further review. Well, the Panthers did the right thing. Get to the line and try to snap, try to get a play underway quickly. And of course, Coach Entz did what he needed to do is use one of his timeouts here. And they'll take another look upstairs. To our crew in the truck providing the replays up to the booth. But while it was going on, I just, I don't know, some, I, from where we were, I, I thought the ball hit the turf in some form or fashion. What a heck of a throw by McIlvain even to get a shot at him in that play. Hayes, pretty good coverage. Nodak Insurance Company replay, you're right. He gets it right past Jabril Cox, and does that ball hit the turf there oh yeah well boy, it's hard to tell isn't it I don't know if there's enough in that particular angle to overturn it but I still think my first reaction was the right one even though this play could easily stand Terry Young as you mentioned is the replay official and James sold it <laughs> he caught the ball decision has been made here. The ruling on the field of a completed pass stands. First down. There's a look. Just can't see where the football is on that angle. Certainly might have hit the ground, but just no way to really tell. Yep. You need clear, definitive visual evidence to overturn it. Boy, a huge third down conversion for Northern Iowa moves the sticks as we approach the five minute mark. Now the Bison did a good job after a nine yard pickup on first to force that third. McIlvain's gonna keep it, dropping it off and it's Graham making the reception. And he is taken down close to another first down by Destin Talbert. Nine yard pickup to the Bison 42. Talbert was a little bit questionable this uh, week uh, with a hip flexor uh, that he loosened up and got to play, but the Bison came with such a, a heavy uh, rush right up the middle in terms of blitzing that it was just a zone underneath, so that's what NDSU was giving up. And it's Hoosman picking up the first down, putting down the shoulders and stumbling ahead to the 38-yard line for a pickup of four. Six foot, listed at 212, put together fairly well in terms of handling some of those tough yards inside. Hoosman again, a 
excuse me, is kept by McIlvain. Flag comes in as he runs out of bounds at the 34. And this one may be coming back. Looks like Matt Vander Slice slapped his hands. He may have been caught for a hold. If the man with two numbers, Vander Slice. Holding offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Well, he didn't give a number, but if it was on Vanderslice, who kind of incriminated himself, he wears number 98 when he's a tight end, number 77, because he is also one of the backup offensive linemen as well. So he plays multiple positions and has multiple uh, uniform numbers to do so. Yeah, and Vanderslice, he started at left tackle against Iowa State. But UNI is so desperate right now in the tight end position group that he needs some extra bodies there. Yeah, we haven't mentioned that uh, much, but Briley Moore, preseason All-American, is out for the year. And Tristan Bohr, that his backup gone too. And Graham makes the reception and gets a good chunk of that yardage back. Out of bounds at about the 36 yard line, so pick up of 12 yards. We'll show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and debit card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. Second and eight from the Bison 36 yard line. McIlvain's gonna throw it up downfield. It is caught by Weston. Made a tremendous adjustment with Tutsi in coverage. And it'll be first in goal for the Panthers at the six. Nodak Insurance Company replay, I truly believe that the Panthers have to do more of this. Just throw it up on the outside and wait for your big guy to make a, a play. Tutsi, I think, tried to jam him early. Weston got behind him, was able to stretch out. And the uh, two biggest plays have been pass plays similar to that in this game for the UNI. Hoosman in the backfield. A Vander Slice and Scott in there at tight end. Hoosman up the middle, diving across the goal line and a touchdown. The third down catch that was reviewed and upheld kept this drive going, and you and I is able to close it out. Really nice push to the inside. Uh, somebody took care of Jack Darnell. Darnell was flying out of there. He was pushed to the side, maybe a slant, and the offensive lineman just kept on taking him. But that's where the Panthers ended up scoring. And Northern Iowa will go for two here. And now a timeout may be called. By Northern Iowa is Mark Farley. Stars time out, Northern Iowa. That's their first. We'll talk it over with his guys. Time now for the Gate City Bank fan cam. Send us your home or watch party picks to fancamyourcam.com and we'll show them in the fourth quarter. Crowd has filled in pretty well here today. We weren't sure exactly what the attendance would be due to several interstates being shut down since yesterday. Well, Coach Entz going for two after the first touchdown. Now Northern Iowa's going to bring Matthew Cook in instead to kick the extra point. Now at least line up like they're going to kick the extra point anyway. Now you generally won't fake it after a timeout. Cook boots it up, and it's perfect. And Northern Iowa claws back to within four with 2.40 to go here until halftime. McIlvain's numbers have to be impressed with him. 9 of 15 for 158 yards and a touchdown. And Weston is doing most of the damage. Three receptions for 87 yards and a score. Bobcat scoring recap. Eight plays, 65 yards as Hoosman takes it in. Please think back to the, uh, the season opener against Iowa State. That's where you and I was able to have a lot of success doing similar plays like that. Just throw it up outside. We got two real good receivers. They have good size. Most of them are taller than the DBs. And if you win those types of plays, you're able to put yourself in a position to 
get it in for a touchdown. And that was a triple overtime loss, too, by the way, to the Cyclones. <laughs> that game that really Northern Iowa should have won. won. <laughs> Chuck will boot it away deep. Ty Brooks waits for it at the one. Oof. Took a big shot at the 15. Not sure who that was in flying in. Maybe Kitty? Who is the punter, but is also a safety on this team. But due to necessity, he is also the punter as well as the defensive back. So Trey Lance and the Bison offense. First and 10 with 235 to go here until halftime. Lance is going to keep it again. Lance keeps the feet moving. Lance still going downfield. And a big pickup up to the 33-yard line on first down. Gain of 18 yards. Ryan Gellner's on the sidelines with a special guest for a First International Bank and Trust sideline report. Yeah, hey guys, Robbie Grimsley, former Bison, joins us. And back for homecoming, you said, back in the Fargo Dome. What's it like to be back here? Uh, it's a lot. I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting, but it feels great to be back, honestly. It's weird watching them run out of the tunnel. I've, I've never been on the other end of it, so just watching the guys, I mean, it's it's kind of surreal being back here, and it's nice. I, I mean, I just love being back in this atmosphere. It's been so long, and, and it's just nice to be back. Not much has changed in the time you left. Northern Iowa is still a big rival. Uh, Special to come back for this one in particular? No, it is. I mean, this is the game I wanted to see. I, I always thought Northern Iowa was about our biggest rival. I know everyone says the Jackrabbits, but personally for me, I always love playing Northern Iowa the most. It just, they always seem like they gave us the hardest fight, and, and even though the Jackrabbits came on top sometimes, but I, it just, Northern Iowa to me was always so hard fought, and, and I guess that's, so that's why I wanted to come to this game. It just felt like the right one for me. You're back in the Minneapolis area. Tell us what you're doing. Are you around football at all? Uh, well, not right now. No, I actually, I could have coached back in Hutchinson. Um, they wanted me to come coach, but I don't know. I figured I'd take a little bit away from the game for a little bit, and right now, so I'm just working right now. I'm actually going to law school next year. So, yeah, I took my LSAT, and now I'm just waiting for the results on that, and I'll, I'll be going to law school. So that's my, next, that's my next step. Good for you, man. Always successful, always fun to catch up with you. We enjoyed watching you play. Good to see you again. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Guys back upstairs. It's a First International Bank and Trust sideline report. Thanks, Ryan. Middle screen set up here for North Dakota State as Cofield makes the reception and gets down to the 46-yard line, and North Dakota State will burn its first timeout with 54 seconds to go. Yeah, Ellerson Smith sniffed it out pretty well. North Dakota State. Now the Bison offense has moved the football here today. Nearly 250 yards of offense in the first half. That's the power of the turnover. Is really the reason the game is as tight as it is right now. You and I have had one and converted that into, into uh, Panthers' first touchdown. you look at ball control, North Dakota State has had the ball 18 minutes in the first half and has run 10 more plays than the Panthers have. But the big plays in the passing game by McIlvain and Weston, critical here for Northern Iowa to hang in. Panthers may be showing some pressure here. And now a timeout for Mark Farley. That's the second for UNI. Did not second like something. Timeout. Austin Evans was so, showing some pre-snap pressure from his field linebacker position, and then he dropped dropped off. I was really interested to see what was going to happen on that <laughs> snap. <laughs> Coach Farley didn't want, didn't want it to happen, so he uses that timeout. Now these two teams have gone at it. There's been some memorable meetings. North Iowa's been close in this building, has won some games here in the past. But the Bison have won five straight in the series. Panthers won 42-27 and kind of a wild one here. I think that was the Pat Pashal sideline skirmish game <laughs> several years ago. It was right down here. Right down here 20. in front of us. Yep. Yep. 
Second and three from the 46. Johnson, Kobe Johnson trying to get the edge. Johnson to the 30, and he is taken out of bounds at the 29-yard line. It was Big Tim Butcher running him down from his defensive tackle position. Omar Brown also in to help on that stop. Nodak Insurance Company replay. There's the give. You see on the, uh, the, the, uh, the read, read the end, and then Butcher was <laughs> showing some, some uh, he did a great job to stay with the play, put it that way. Let's go to Ryan Gellner. Hey guys, another First International Bank and Trust sideline report. I talked to kicker Griffin Krosa. His target was the 31-yard line. That makes it a 48-yard field goal. The Bison are there right now. And with Johnson going out of bounds, that stopped the clock. So any issue, still two timeouts. Lance now flushed. He can run and he will. And he will run out of bounds, chased out by Flater after a gain of four to the 25-yard line. And that will stop the clock again with 41 seconds until halftime I was watching Kobe Johnson on that play and the one thing that true uh, freshmen usually have a problem with is pass protection boy did he do a really nice job to uh, step up and and hit uh, Seth Thomas you see number 95 Seth Thomas who is uh, 262 pounds but I tell you Johnson took him off, uh, off his pass rush very well Lance will continue to operate out of the shotgun here on second and six You and I bring in some pressure. Lance escaping. Now throwing downfield. Babich jumped up. Nepal just out of his reach on the sideline. We'll bring up third and six. It's the one thing that Trey Lance doesn't have quite down yet is when he's moving to his left. His ball has a tendency to, to, to go high as it did there, and it also has a tendency to nosedive if he throws it really hard. He tried to touch pass that one in there while he was in the move, uh, while he was on the move anyway, and it went a little bit too high. Lance hanging in there again, firing on the out, and just out of the reach of Jimmy Kapuris at the 15-yard line. And that'll bring up fourth down and a field goal attempt for Griffin Krosa. It'll be about a 42-yard attempt. Last couple of snaps, you and I was very aggressive on the pressures. At that time, it was coming right up the middle, picked up fairly well by NDSU, but the incomplete. Looks like they'll spot it now from 43 yards on the right hash. Krosa puts it down, and this one is well off the mark, wide left. His first miss as a collegiate kicker, and the score remains 18-14 with 28 seconds left to go until halftime. And a big stop here for Northern Iowa's defense late in the half. And again, not that they that they got to Lancer, there was a threat of a sack, but there was enough pressure to force him to move. It looks like Northern Iowa will take a knee here and head into the locker room and be content to be down just four. Well, after the start and after being down a couple of touchdowns, Coach Farley has no problem with 18-14 at this stage of the game. Well, it was 15-0 North Dakota State after the first quarter, and Northern Iowa, a couple of big passing plays, and the Panthers right back into the football game after the first 30 minutes. And Ryan Gellner will catch a word with NDSU head coach Matt Entz. Matt, you got off to the fast start, got some points early. They've been able to creep back into this thing, though. Well, you get a big, big turnover, and then all of a sudden the ball's in the 12-yard line. That's it's up. And then we had a busted coverage in the end zone, and then just, you know, too many big plays. You know, we were getting them in second and long. We can't get off the field on third down right now, and so shoot, they're, they're converting about 60% of their third downs. So there's plenty of things we can try to fix over the course of halftime here. All right, we'll let you do that. Good luck. Guys, back upstairs. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. Good football game. Two Missouri Valley Conference rivals. North Dakota State leading 18-14 at halftime. Stay tuned to the Proceed Halftime Report with Bethuel Kyle Emanuel and Alex Egan is after this.
Welcome back to Gate City Bank Field at the Fargo Dome. Brian Sean, Lee Timmerman with you, and Ryan Gellner, a chance to catch up with you and I head coach Mark Farley. Coach Farley, good football game. They were able to get you early. You came right back. We kept our poise, but there's a lot of football left. All right, good luck second half. Thank you. Guys, back upstairs to you. Short and sweet from Coach Farley, but still has to be pleased with the way he was able to get a defensive stop, too, at the end of that half because the Panthers will get the ball here to start this third quarter. Yeah, because they deferred off the uh, off the, the uh, flip at the beginning of the game. But the one stat that, I guess, to me kind of jumps out is yards per completion because right now uh, the Panthers are averaging 19 and a half yards every time the ball has been caught. Obviously, it's been one-on-one -on -one situations to the outside. NDSU's been doing some pretty good things to prevent anything happening much in the running game. So I think it has to be a little bit more of that all-or-nothing stuff from you and I. Yeah, credit to Will McElvain. He's been under some pressure, but he's hung in there, and he's delivered some balls for his receivers to just go get them. Yeah, talented kid. I mean, you, you don't they don't handy the job. You earn the job. He's the only guy in Iowa 4A history to have a season of 2,000 passing yards, or excuse me, uh, passing yards, yes, and 1,000 rushing yards. So he has that multi-dimension. The running part of it hasn't really happened much today. The Bison thought they'd see more quarterback run, but the Panthers had some success getting the ball uh, in those 50-50 situations outside. And then Trevor Allen, the top running back for Northern Iowa, hobbled off in that second quarter. Not sure of his status, if he'll come back as well. It may be Soku and Hoosman that have to take the Panthers home here in the second half as well. Yep, exactly, because it did not look like Allen was feeling really well when he, when he left. Offensively, North Dakota State, from a ball control standpoint, ran 12 more plays and had about a seven-minute advantage in time of possession, but just not able to cash in. And that's a big reason why NDSU only has the four-point lead. I think it maybe boils down to first down efficiency for the Bison. When NDSU was a little more efficient on first down, things rolled a little bit easier. Turn off the second half with a Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kickoff your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Touchback for you and I, and the Panthers will start from the 25-yard line. That man right there, 10th most wins in the history of FCS football, 152 of them. Went into the U and I Hall of Fame in 2012. Eddie Robinson Award winner. Well, let's take a look at the quarterback numbers sponsored by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by Beef Farmers and Ranchers. McIlvain, as LT mentioned, nine completions, but for 158 yards. And Weston doing most of the damage. He has three of those catches for 87 yards. New formation. McIlvain looked like he was going to be caught in the backfield and then able to make something out of nothing and dives ahead to the 27. James Kayser there to make the stop for NDSU. Looked to me that McIlvain had to call an audible on that play after the snap because I think he was rolling to look to throw off the flat with two receivers out there. But he didn't get a chance to roll to his left. Handoff. Boy, nice job by North Dakota State. It was Kayser coming off his block and then making the tackle. Got some help from Josh Hayes as well. So that'll bring up third and seven. That was uh, Allen that did have the ball, so he must have gotten taped up, or now he's jogging off on this third and long situation. There's Trevor, the senior. We have not seen a lot of Marquise Bridges in that second quarter, but he's out there playing the slot now here in the nickel package on third and long. Northern Iowa had four third down conversions last week against YSU of eight plus yards. We'll see if they can come up with a big one here. Three man rush. McIlvain across the middle. Ooh, big hit! And the ball is loose, and Marquise Bridges has it. I think it was Josh Hayes putting the lick on Deion McShane, who is still down. And McShane is going to go back to the turf after Hayes got the hit. He made the catch, tried to make that football move to get upfield, but Hayes was playing in a zone. Bison went with max protection here in the Nodak Insurance, uh, uh, excuse me, Nodak Mutual Insurance uh, replay. Boom. The football comes flying out of there. The Bison covered up in bridges, and McShane was hit hard. Second turnover of the game for Northern Iowa. And this will set up North Dakota State again in good field position. Up until last week, North Dakota State didn't even have a fumble recovery, and now they have two in two weeks. 
We'll step aside here as they tend to McShane. He's still down on the turf. Certainly hope he's okay. 13.44 to go in the third quarter. Here's a look at Deion McShane. Looks to be okay as North Dakota State starts this drive from the 35. And there is Adam Cofield. Gaining five yards to the 30. Lawrence there to force him out of bounds. I was watching Ben Ellison just take care of uh, Ellerson Smith. Ellerson ended up laying on top of him. That's how well he blocked the defensive end on that play. But a golden opportunity for the Bison here to get their major mistake in the first half. You wipe that out if you can now get the six points back again after a turnover here early in the third. Play action for Lance. Setting up downfield. Gindorf is all alone. Touchdown! 30 yards! And Noah Gindorf has his fifth of the season. How many catches has he had? Five. Yes, you're right. Five catches, five touchdowns. And that's the tenth touchdown by the tight end group this year. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Showing action to the wide side of the field and flattery. Or excuse me, uh, uh, Flater, number 22, was beat so bad he wasn't even trying to hustle to catch back up. He was just jogging. He knew he gave it up. Well, well designed and executed. <laughs> Noah Gindorf is a touchdown machine. One of these days he might catch a ball that isn't a touchdown. Brosa adds the extra point and it's 25-14. North Dakota State on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard as the Bison cash in on the turnover. Media timeout. Bobcats scoring recap. Two plays, 35 yards in just 42 seconds. Noah Gendor, five touchdown receptions. That leads the Missouri Valley Conference tied with Isaiah Weston for most. 16 and 10. 16 catches by the tight ends. 10 touchdowns this year. Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. And oh boy. Slipping down there trying to make a cut was Aaron Graham. And Northern Iowa backed up to its own 14 yard line. What a guy that only has five receptions on the season leads the Missouri Valley in touchdown That's receptions. It. Not bad. Here's a look. The young man from northern Minnesota. Well, as long as you're talking tight end group, if the, the next touchdown Ben Elfson gets will be the all-time record for tight ends caught, too, breaking Jeremiah Wurzbachers. Those two are tied with 14 career. McIlvain stepping up and stepping ahead for no gain to the 14-yard line as the Bison collapsed down. Matt Beagler, among others, coming in to make that stop on McIlvain. Interesting things on the defensive line because number 92, Jack Darnell, the nose guard, played it soft. He actually got up, went out, played a little bit of the flat, and once he saw the quarterback start to run, then he helped close back down. So that's a different look for the redshirt freshman to see that as well. McIlvain has some time, and now he's going to run for it. And he's going to have a first down before Kayser forces him out. And that's one thing this young man can do, pick up of 12. So that insurance company replay is going to get around the big man and then make a nice little move here. Sidestep Kayser, pick up the first. Boy, a lot going on here, and McIlvain ended up keeping it. And picked up a yard, maybe two, before he is dropped. Beagler in on another tackle. Jackson Hankey also coming in. North Dakota State will shuffle in four new defensive linemen. Luxury the Bison can do that. Not many teams can. McIlvain's going to throw it up. Downfield, and the catch is made again by Weston. No question, the most effective offensive play for you and I today are those deep passes against man coverage to the outside. 
Well, that insurance company repaint. McElvain puts this one up. He puts it nice and high, drops it over Bridges, lets his big man get to the high point and make the catch. Boy, Weston now four receptions for 124 yards. Soko has a nice hole. Couldn't spin out of a tackle as he's wrapped up by Michael Tutsi, but a good gain on first down of nine yards to the Bison 26. And he comes up a little gimpy. But I think, Brian, one of the reasons he's able to have such good gain on that, on that uh, first down run is because of the success on the man outside. The Bison played two deep safeties as we look at the replay, and that means that uh, the strong safety can't come crashing down as fast and as hard as he wants to because he has deep responsibility in the pass coverage as well. Hoosman gets the call, keeps the feet churning, and moves ahead to the 20-yard line for a first down. Jackson Hankey, another tackle for North Dakota State. Soko and some pain over there on the training table. Right now, Hoosman's the only real healthy running back you and I have. McElvain swings it out to the tight end, Jaden Scott, but quickly there to make the stop, James Hendricks, gain of only one. Tight ends for you and I have been such a, a strong position group over the course of the last few years, but with uh, both the injury to Moore and to Bohr, it's very young and inexperienced tight ends playing right now for you and I, uh, you and, I and the Panthers have had to change some things offensively. Both Moore and Bohr, by the way, should be able to redshirt this year, though. So even though they're injured, they'll save their year. McElvain dropping back by her across the middle again, and it's open man, and he dropped it. Jalen James was alone in the middle of the end zone, and he couldn't hang on. Boy, that was a good pass. McElvain put it right where he had to split the two deep safeties. Tampa 2, middle linebacker drops. That's Hanky 52 right here. He's looking, and then he will drop, and you split the safeties right over the linebacker. That was a pretty pass. Just wasn't caught. Third and long. UNI, three of six on third down today. Crowd coming to life. Bison bringing pressure. McIlvain rolls, throwing it to the end zone. It is batted away. Two Bison defenders in the area blanketing Weston, and that'll bring up a field goal situation for the Panthers. Well, Josh Hayes had really good position, but there was also deep help, safety help coming from Michael Tutsi. McIlvain just can't hold the ball much longer than that. Tried to put it up a little bit higher, but now the Bison had it covered. The difference between that one and some of the long ones downfield that have been working is the timing of the play. McIlvain had to run too far before releasing it. 37-yard attempt for Cook. And this time he is no good. Wide to the right again. Very close. And the Panthers come up empty. Media timeout. 8.58 to go in the third quarter. North Dakota State maintaining an 11-point lead on the A-Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard as Cook just misses from 37. First and 10, North Dakota State from the 20. Lance dumping it off to his tight end, Ben Ellefson. And he is forced out of bounds after a gain of close to eight yards. First catch of the day for Ellefson. And Trey Lance's numbers in that first half were very good. Sponsored by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by Beef Farmers and Ranchers. 138 yards, three touchdowns so far today. And with that completion, now 10 of 15 for 145 yards. Should mention Zach Kubis, number 61, in a rotation now at left guard. Boy, nice job by Northern Iowa stringing that thing out. It was Ellerson Smith coming from behind 
to grab Ty Brooks by the hips and not let him get away, and no gain on second down. We'll bring up third and short. Kodak Insurance Company replay. Smith coming from the high side of your screen. Can run that play down from behind. That was one of the question marks is how aggressive he would be down the line in the run game today. But I think you and I's hand has been forced a little bit in terms of what it has to do against the NDSU run. Cofield's going to get the give. Keeps churning. But I think he's going to be a yard short of a first down. And Northern Iowa comes up with a big third down stop. Tim Butcher got in there, and the other guy plugging things up was Flater. Boy, it looked like Cofield had some room to maneuver that time, but unable to get out of the tackle. We'll bring on Garrett Wegner for the punt. Buying, building, or refinancing. Start with a Gate City Bank Blue Standard pre-approval and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCity.Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Wegner boots this one away, and it takes a North Dakota State bounce, and it continues to bounce inside the 15, and finally rolling to a stop at the 11-yard line. So well done by Wegner. And poor field, field position once again for Northern Iowa. Now a flag comes out. Xavier Williams <laughs> got into it with somebody from North Dakota State. But Williams, I think, started. I'm not going to say that he's the, 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 there was jawing going on, but Williams was the first one that gave the little extra shove after the ball uh, or while the ball was still rolling and before the play was dead. Coach Farley giving Williams a little bit of an earful and as he came off the field. Just the second penalty of the game. It's been relatively clean so far for both teams. After the play, personal foul, unsportsmanlike conduct, kicking team, number 42, 15 yard penalty, first down. And it's going to go on Jabril Cox. The 42 is who was called. Well, first contact, like I said. It, I thought first contact was from Williams, but it was Jabril Cox that moved Williams first. And that'll move the ball up to the 26-yard line. That is the first penalty on North Dakota State today. Those are the style of, of penalties that will really upset a coach and a coaching staff, though. Well, North Dakota State, a couple of penalties after the whistle last week at Illinois State. McElvain under center here on first and 10. Huseman, nothing. Stuffed up in the middle. Jackson Hankey coming in there to make the tackle for North Dakota State. Lost a yard. The Bison were so much faster than the Panthers at them as soon as the snap happened on that particular play. NDSU almost seemed like they were the ones calling the snap. I mean, they, that was, a, that was an impressive push. Hoosman again on the counter. Aaron Mercadell, a big lick. Gain of one. Mercadell's had limited reps today because of a lot of the uh, style of plays and types of plays that you and I has had. But in this running situation, number 55 comes in, and he laid the wood pretty good on that hit. Third and long for the Panthers. You and I, three of seven so far today. Three of five at halftime. Have not picked up a third yet here in the second half. Three-man rush for the Bison. Jabril Cox chasing down a man. Weston able to get free and make the reception, but quickly closing to make the tackle. James Kayser, and that'll bring up a punting situation. Well, McElveen did a good job just to get that ball off. And then, of course, it was Kayser on a one-on-one. -on -one. Jabril Cox kind of spying the quarterback on his hips. He's able to flip it in front, but then Kayser takes down the big man. And we'll bring on Kibby.
Kibbe. Oh, a nice job this time. Driving back Trevor Height to his own 21-yard line. Height, some room to maneuver, but an excellent open field tackle for the Panthers, making that stop for UNI. Brock Hadachek, linebacker, has been moved to somewhat fullback tight end. Let's pause for a quick message from the Bank of North Dakota. My plan was to get a degree in engineering. And with the help of a student loan from Bank of North Dakota, I did. If you want to build something solid, you need a plan. Bank of North Dakota, helping you achieve more. Lions defense comes up with a stop on Northern Iowa. And now Trey Lance will get him set from the 30-yard line. Brooks. Trying to find a hole, not much there. And finally driven back and dropped by Bronte Wells after a gain of one. I thought Coach Farley had some really nice things to say about Bronte Wells this week. And he was talking about uh, how uh, Thomas and Smith get most of the glory from their defensive end position. But he said, he meaning Farley said, that Bronte is the key to the whole thing because his ability to come in, rotate, keep the other defensive line, uh, ends fresh is one of the reasons that, the, that they've been able to stay successful and not get too tired out. That was really good work in the community as well. It's a family services major. Was recognized for some of the service he does with kids in the community. Oh, a little flea flicker action. Lance is loaded up. Christian Watson is running free. He could not hang on, and Roosevelt Lawrence got back into the play and broke that thing up at the 20. Lance just couldn't quite get it far enough, fast enough, because he was out there, but this ball has a lot of air underneath it, and it allows Lawrence the opportunity to run down the ball. Watson high points it, but boy, he was in good contact, and then the right hand sweeps the ball away. Well done by the senior defensive back. So now third and eight. Lance firing it out. Ooh, that was a dangerous pass, overthrowing his man in the flat in a three and out for the Bison. Had that ball been on target, Austin Evans may have taken it back for a pick six. And Garrett Wegner back out quickly for a punting situation here for North Dakota State. Here come the Panthers. Wagner able to get it off. And Williams will call for the fair catch at the 26-yard line. Fair catch call the top near the 26-yard line. First and 10 for the Panthers from there. Time now for the Gate City Bank Fan Cam. Still time to send us, send us your home or watch party picks to fancamyourcam.com and we'll show them in the fourth quarter. Northern Iowa right back to work with 3.43 to go here in the third quarter. McIlvain has time. He's going to go deep again. Man running underneath it, and it is incomplete. A little bit underthrown that time for Weston with Marquise Bridges in coverage. I'm not sure if McIlvain is just reading where the safeties are and then making an adjustment at the line or if it's called from the line. But that time, uh, NDSU was in a single high safety, not a double safety help, anybody deep. McIlvain saw that one-on-one, -on -one, press coverage on the outside, went for it again. It's been successful today, but it's high risk, high reward, and low percentage. Hoosman gets the carry. He is wrapped up quickly after a gain of three by Michael Tutsi, and that'll bring up third and seven. You know the one thing we haven't seen much today when you and I has handed the ball off? Yards after first contact. NDSU has been tackling the, the runner, I think, very well. And that's one area David Braun said we have to continue to work at, is take better angles, still working at leverage, and we just have to get better at tackling overall. And so far today, the Bison defense has done a nice job of that. Forcing another third and long.
Eisen bringing pressure. McIlvain across the middle. Jalen James had it in his hands again, and he dropped another one. Back Insurance Company replay, you're going to see the pressure. 52-42, both those two linebackers come, throw back over the middle. It was there to be had, but James couldn't hold on to it. Boy, a couple of big drops today for Northern Iowa. The one by James in the end zone, certainly the one that stands out. And a three and out for the Panthers very quickly. Kibbe. As height calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 31. Whether you're buying, building, or refinancing, Gate City Bank home loans are locally approved, financed, and serviced. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Each time uh, the teams have punted the last few times, you can kind of, you, if you didn't see the scoreboard there on how the teams are playing it, you can tell what the score is because the Panthers are behind, they're going for it, they're, they're getting max rush, they're trying to block it. The Bison are playing passive and trying to make sure that nothing weird happens on the catch end. Back to the ground game again. Kalarvik right there in the middle to stand up Adam Cofield after a gain of one. Farley hoping his defense could come up with another stop here as we wind down the third quarter. And that was Coach Farley's side of the ball. That's what he played, the walk-on from walk-on. Two sons that played here, Jared and Jake, both really Very good linebackers. Good. Room to roam here for Kobe Johnson, following his lead blocker, and Johnson driving the pile ahead. Still moving to the 48-yard line. Have not seen much of Kobe Johnson here in the second half, but a big carry here to move the sticks. A lot of pressure coming up the middle, and the Bison had the right call. You seal the outside, <laughs> and you have, what was that, Dylan Radens down there just burying Flater about 15 yards downfield. 15 yards on that run for Kobe Johnson, North Dakota State. Now 176 yards on the ground today. Johnson again. Good footwork. Was initially tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. Still fell ahead for four to the 48 of UNI. Certainly the point of the game with an 11-point lead. NDSU would really love to just be able to grind some things on the ground here, even though last possession with the flea flicker and that, I mean, the, the pass play was there, just wasn't executed, so the Bison still will take some shots through the air, but NDSU would love to keep the chains just rolling along with some nice gains on the ground. Lance is going to keep it. Boy, look at him lower the shoulder on Roosevelt Lawrence. Two yards short of a first down. Looked like a power read yeah, it situation like it for, because you, you pull the guard for the power, and then Lance has the opportunity to, to hand it off or to run it. Well, that, team. Po that power read is something that the Bison have not used much against you and I the last handful of years. Neither team lighting the world on fire here in third down conversions in the second half. Lance is going to keep it again. Boy, look at him explode through the hole. Trey Lance. Carrying a couple tacklers to the 29-yard line. Uh, Caden Hotelling was in a really bad spot. It was three on one in the middle, and he gets munched. He's in the middle of that with 67, I think 87, and then another guard was in and there on him. So the Bison will take the lead into the fourth. 25-14, North Dakota State. Trey Lance, 10 carries, 78 yards on the ground. And the Bison, going into the final 15 minutes, are marching inside the UNI 30. Back after this. First to 10 for North Dakota State at the UNI 29-yard line to start this fourth quarter. That ball batted at the line of scrimmage. I think Seth Thomas was the guy to get his hands up. He was locked up. 
with one of the North Dakota State offensive linemen. I believe that was Cordell Volson. We'll bring up second and ten. I've not heard much from Thomas today. Very productive player, over 20 starts for Northern Iowa in his career. Two yeah, sacks coming into this game. Yeah, and the Panthers have a solid defensive line. Very Brinkman good. In, Brinkman in the middle, and those two guys, you know, we talked about Smith a lot, but those two guys on the end. Stretch play to Kobe Johnson following Malstrom. But a good job by Jagan. Able to trip him up after a gain of four yards. We'll bring up third and six. The Bison go over the 200 yard mark on the ground with that play as well. NDSU averaging 288 rushing yards through the first five games, fifth best in the FCS. Johnson will split out now. With Ty Brooks also in the game. And there goes Johnson to the high side of your screen. Lance is going to keep it again. Dives across the 20. Uh, maybe a yard short of a first down. I think they're standing right on the 20, so they're going to be a uh, yard short. Klarvik on the stop there for UNI. And Matt Entz is going to bring in his beef and keep his offense on the field. Kodak Insurance Company replay. That's a power read. You see the pull from Jensen to help lead that thing. Lance tries to stretch it out. They give him the Duke. They do give him a pretty good job on the stretch. That's up to the 20, though. Fourth down. Cofield the tailback. Malstrom the fullback. Cofield puts the shoulder pads down. Needed one. He got two to the 18, and he moves the sticks. That is the fourth time the Bison have gone for it on fourth down this year. NDSU has picked it up now three times. And in those short yardage situations, Cofield has been the guy that gets his number called more than anybody else this season. And he stays in there. He's on top of the eye right now. With Lukey and Malstrom in. Oh, it opens up for Cofield inside the five, down to the one yard line. Bison will go quick. Nordak Insurance Company replay. Those two fullbacks leading the way. One extra guard help. NDSU is knocking on the door. First and goal from the one. And Mark Farley quickly coming in to call a timeout right before the snap. Go back to that previous play. Fire and NDSU. Charge timeout, Northern Iowa. That's their first. NDSU usually takes those two fullbacks and moves one of them into a power eye, power eye situation on the strength. And so when you don't give away your strength, it's a little bit harder to defend. Show your buys and fry today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and debit card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. Matt Entz, the Waterloo native. He grew up right there, coached it, you and I as well. Asking David Braun, too, who's the first-year defensive coordinator for North Dakota State, is it strange to go up against your old compadres from Northern Iowa? And he said, yeah, it's definitely weird. Just coaching special teams. I know a, a lot of kids on the roster. Ooh, there's a lot of extra beef on this side. Two tight ends and a fullback. Now they'll flip it. Uh oh, I think the Bison might have had one too many guys. Mm. Illegal yeah. substitution, defense. Oh, the other way. Right. The other way. Formation. Penalties enforced half the distance to the goal line. So they'll move the ball about a foot and a half. Inside. <laughs> and, he, and he called the timeout, too. Now the Panthers finally take the extra guy off. North Dakota State needs about a foot. The ball is extremely close. You can see it right there. And they're going to balance the formation. Lukey in motion. Give to Cofield. 
Pushing across. Did he get in? Yes, touchdown. all that movement and the issue does set up a power eye and runs right up the gut confirmed that he did get across Hendricks will stay <laughs> at four two point formation and now bring everybody in Should snap it to Kelly sometimes. Snap it to the snapper. <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. Crosa will boot it up and knock it through. North Dakota State extends the lead to 32 14, 12 53 to go in the fourth quarter as Adam Cofield powers it across. And the Bison lead it by 18. Dakota State extending the lead 32 14 on an Adam Cofield touchdown run. The Bison, another 11 play drive. North Dakota State, in terms of time of possession, a seven minute advantage over UNI so far here this afternoon. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Xavier Williams calls for the fair catch at the four yard line. Your Bobcats scoring the recap. 11 plays, 68 yards, a couple of third down conversions for the Bison, and 451. A couple of nice double digit scoring drives from NDSU here in the second half. That man is 1253 away from picking up his sixth win as a head coach. And for the program, it would be the 27th straight win, which would be the second longest winning streak of all time trailing only North Dakota's 33-game winning streak from 2012 to 2014. McIlvain out of the shotgun here on first down. Flag comes out. I think the play clock ran out. Delay of game. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. I thought it looked like you and I was going to set up to try to maybe take another shot to with Weston downfield and Michael Tuxey thought the same thing. And here is the winning streaks we were talking about. James Madison and the Bison in the last couple of years. Right now with 26 each. McIlvain fakes the give, gets it out to Graham. Graham trying to put a shake on, and he is finally forced out of bounds after a gain of five, maybe six yards to 30-yard line. Well, we mentioned it earlier too when we're talking about the streak probably bears were repeating that it was the Panthers from you and I that stopped the 33 game streak back in 2014 you know with Carson Wentz at the helm the buys an offense only three games down three points down in Cedar Falls that was the Xavier Williams game <laughs> he was a man, man he was awesome on that day that was the day you knew that man was going to have an NFL career and he was dominant in the middle that nose guard for Northern Iowa back in those days and McIlvain scampers ahead to the 39 yard line and picks up a first down. Williams is still in the NFL playing with the Chiefs now I believe. You have some of the buys and offensive linemen who are the best defensive tackle they've gone up against that guy's name comes up a lot. You and I working quickly here trailing by 18 swinging it out and tipped away pass was batted. In midair there by, I believe, Destin Talbert coming over to make a play on the football. Yep, Talbert playing his zone. He's the corner. He's the underman with safety help over the top. So as a receiver, you're trying to set in a window. Nodak Insurance Company replay. McElvain throws to that window. Talbert goes up, high points the ball out of there. First target today as well for Nick Phillips, junior wideout. Ground game, not much. Couple to the 41 for Hoosman, who's really been the guy that's been the featured back here in the second half with a couple of UNI tailbacks going out with apparent ankle injuries. Yeah, out of necessity. Trevor Allen and Alfonso Soko beat up a little bit in this game. Spencer Wagey coming in to make that 
tackle for North Dakota State, third and long again. Eisen showing some pressure here. Derek Tusk is standing up there in the middle of your in the middle of formation. Here come the Bison. McElvain hanging in there high. Not sure if he was looking for Phillips or Weston, but it drops incomplete. And here comes the punting unit for Northern Iowa. Now McElvain getting up limping a little bit. Well, the all-out pressure coming at him. He had no more time to look downfield and get that ball away because McElvain with that big pressure, pressure right up the gut was hit again on the throw. No chance really to complete the ball, but at least he got it off. Bring in Kibbe for another punt. Trevor Height back at his own 20. Height will take the punt at the 18. Quickly getting up field, and Trevor Height! Another excellent return for this junior out of Wisconsin, who came into this game leading the FCS in punt return average. Had a good one there of close to 36 yards. Buying, building, or refinancing. Start with a Gate City Bank blue standard pre-approval and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCity.Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC equal housing lender. We talked about Jared Brinkman a lot early. I haven't heard his name called much either, so Carson Schooning and friends doing a good job on him. That was actually a 28-yard return there for Height, not 36, as Ty Brooks scampers ahead for nine. And now North Dakota State going to try to start leaning on this Northern Iowa defensive front. Well, who did we call out right before that play? And that's exactly where the Bison ran it, right on the left side of the center and having extreme success with a pickup of nine on the ground. This will be the 62nd offensive play for North Dakota State today. 237 yards rushing now. Brooks, boy, met in the backfield. Good job coming in to make that tackle for Northern Iowa by Spencer Kuvalier. Not seen him much on the field today, but that stops Ty Brooks short of a first down will bring up third and two. But well, Kuvalier took a lot of snaps because Kalarvik missed uh, almost two games, a game and a half, and he was playing that uh, middle linebacker position. Now he's back in a row. He played so many snaps uh, before. I mean, he's second on the team in tackles. tackles. Yeah. Cofield into the game, stumbling ahead, using his legs to continue to move the pile, and a good pickup on third and two as Cofield moves the chains, moving ahead to the 36. Christian Jagan makes the tackle for UNI. Nash Jensen with a solid job, of helping set that in. Little pull and probably a step and a half, then he whacks that defensive end and stops that outside pressure and helps open up the middle. Cofield up to 67 yards rushing on the day. He's going to get another run here. Spinning away into the open field. Cofield working off a Watson block. It is into the end zone. Touchdown. Right in our conversation with Tyler Roll this week as we look at the Nodak Insurance Company replay. He said that the running backs and the rotation they have, that the backs are fresh when they're getting the ball. So Cofield knows he's getting the ball, and then just look at the want to. The want to to get into that end zone, kind of backs his way in there as Cofield continues to establish himself as a guy who can get into the end zone for NDSU. Low snap put down by Hendricks. Prosa adds the extra point. That's now 39-14 with 9.05 to go. Adam Cofield, two touchdowns today and 104 rushing yards. And the Bison are pulling away from the Panthers. 282 yards on the ground so far. Calls for the fair catch. You'll have to take my word for it. There we go. <laughs> yeah, the Bison just physically in this fourth quarter have taken over. 
again, Northern Iowa team that certainly wants to try to establish the run, but it has just not come very easy this year. Just 101 yards per game on average, which is eighth best in the Missouri Valley Conference. Right now, it does not look to me that you and I has the parts in place to be able to have a very good running game. Just as we say that, Hoosman runs free. <laughs> Oops. Oh, look at the strong finish there from Hoosman. All the way up to the 46-yard line. Good strong run there to start this drive for UNI. Gain of 21. Not that he made a block, but they took Jaden Scott and just the tight end and had him motion through the backfield and then ran right behind him. Hoosman again, this time James Kayser quickly get into the backfield, but Hoosman still able to fall ahead for a gain of four to midfield. James Kayser. Well, that young man right there comes from football family, one of 10 children. Had a couple brothers play football in the Ivy League, had two other brothers, and his father played football at St. Cloud State. Can imagine what the backyard games were like in that family growing up. And getting most of his snaps from the linebacker position for NDSU this year. That's where he's playing right now. Hoosman again gets the call. Jabril Cox able to take him down after a gain of three. He will bring up third and three. You now, Kayser making a move from safety down to the linebacker spot. In terms of the run game, it doesn't change a whole lot in, in what he's reading and what he's looking at. What the difference is, it just happens so much faster because you're only a couple of yards off the, off the ball. Northern Iowa does not have a third down conversion here in the second half. McIlvain flushed. Flag comes in as McIlvain tries to get the first. Marquise Bridges forces him out two yards short. I think a hold coming up here as well on the Panthers. Likely four down territory, you'd have to think, if the penalties decline. I thought Lane Tucker got a real nice push. I think Matt Entz is going to elect to move them back and make it third and long. Again. Offense, number 76, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, third down. Goes on the junior Spencer Brown, 6'8, 290 out of Lenox, Iowa. Yeah, I think you have to take the penalty, don't you, when, when you know it's a fourth down, going to go for it situation. So third and 13 for the Panthers now as we With tick down towards the seven minute marks. Turns home to host South Dakota next Saturday. Phillips, his first reception, and he has a little room to run. Boy, nice burst there by Phillips, and he has a first down to the 40. And the Panthers set up the screen and get enough bodies out there to move into the issue and pick up that first down. Richard Jr. out of Iowa City, Iowa. Been getting the call again, and Aaron Mercadell crashing down, makes the tackle from behind, maybe a half yard pickup on the play. Time now for the Gate City Bank fan cam. Thanks to all of you that sent us your Homer Watch party picks. That could be a lot of places in the state, that one. The folks that are staying home, we certainly understand, especially from the western half of the state, if you were unable to get here, and uh, they start them young here in North Dakota and all across the region. Thank you for sending us your photos today. McIlvain will throw, swinging it out high and looking for Hoosman, and Hoosman is still down at the 35-yard line. 
Actually, I thought to me it looked like Josh Hayes was a little kind on that play because he was player. lined up to maybe really lay the wood to him like he did earlier to McShane, but uh, that pass was a little high, and I thought that Media Hayes backed off. 529 to go in the football game. Buys it in control, 39-14. We'll step aside and be back. 529 to go. Third and 10 for Northern Iowa from the North Dakota State 40. McElvain buying time. Now going to take off and run. We'll pick up five yards to bring up fourth and five. The Bison had everything pretty well covered downfield. I thought that was a wise move by McElvain to not try to take on Jabril Cox right there. It's going to be fourth down anyway. No use punishing yourself like that. And Trevor Allen back into the game, and we have not seen him since the first couple of plays in the third quarter, but UNI is out of tailbacks with who's been getting helped off. McElvain across the middle, incomplete low, looking for Jalen James, James Hendricks, Jabril Cox in on the coverage, and a turnover on downs. And James tried to set down right at the 30, which is what UNI needed for the first down, but he was squeezed by both the safety and the linebacker. Zeb Nolan will come into the game at quarterback for North Dakota State. He's appeared in a couple of games so far this season. He's looking at from Iowa State. I'm sorry, looking at McElvain's numbers, he's 15 to 29 right now. 158 yards at half. And again, really, Weston was the guy. He had 129 receiving yards of McElvain's 233. Well, helmet goals rolling on first down as Kobe Johnson doesn't gain much. A yard, maybe. The Bison with some backup offensive linemen in the game right now, including a young man by the name of Cody Mauk, a sophomore from Hankinson, who will wear 70 and he will also wear 88. He kind of plays the same role Vanderslice plays for UNI. They can use him as a tight end in some packages and also as a tackle. You talk about a guy who's worked to put to put some weight on since oh. he's been in this program. Cody's only a sophomore from Hankinson, and they list him at 290 now. Came in at 225 as a tight end. Has really bulked up. Yeah, that's Cody, whoops, right there, number 70. Stretch play to the outside. Sabian Clark spinning away, and the Iowa native from Sioux City has a first down across the 45 to the 47. Yeah, Clark played at Bishop Heeland High School. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Brian mentioned the stretch. Pretty good steal. And then I really like what uh, buys an offensive line right tackle. Got a little bit of a seal and then scrubs to the second level. Clark remaining in the game as we're under four minutes to go. Mark putting the shoulder ahead, diving to the 50 for a game of three. Also seeing Jalen Sundell into the game as well, a redshirt freshman out of Maryville, Missouri. And he's number 72. Cordell Volson slides down a spot and is getting some ga uh, some reps at right guard instead of the tackle position that he's normally at. Johnson hit right away. It was Kristen Boyd, I think, that was the first there, and then others helped. Pick up of one will bring up third and five. Ah, third and six. The Bison are averaging 288 yards on the ground coming into this game, and now they're close to 300. 297. And that man right there has done a tremendous job as a first-year offensive line coach. Coming over from Rutgers, a friend of Matt Entz from the good old days at Winona State, and A.J. Blazik has this group playing at a very high level. Johnson has the first down, Johnson into the clear. Kobe Johnson will take it in. 49 yard touchdown. Yeah. 
Well, we showed Coach Blazik, and I think the one thing he has done a little bit different is he really wants his offensive linemen to push and get downfield. And number 67, Volson, is 13 yards. Right there's the key block. He's 13 yards away from where the ball was snapped, making the key block that number 24, Johnson, runs it in. North Dakota State had 352 rushing yards last year in Cedar Falls. The Bison, 347 rushing yards here today. And it is a blowout here in the fourth quarter. Here's the block on the right side. He, where is he? You're going to see 67 come in here and make the key block. Well, we just turned it around. But Kobe Johnson showing off his speed. The true freshman from Georgia coming up here and enjoying the snow and enjoying what the Bison are getting done on the offensive line. The block right there, 67 on 22. And 21. 13 yards <laughs> downfield. He took Jagan out of the play, too. Yep. Safety. The Bison offensive line. I mean, Coach Blazik and Coach Ensis told us about that, and T. Roll as well. These, these guys run. They want to get downfield, not just make your initial block. <laughs> well done, Cordell. Yeah, Tyler Roll told us for the second time this season. He's just he's just a little puppy. He's so excited to play football. That he loves to play so much. And that weighs 315 pounds. Five plays, 65 yards on the Bobcat scoring recap as Kobe Johnson has his second rushing touchdown of the season. You know, I don't even know if they notice it, that they do it a lot, but I notice it before games that Bolson and Zach Johnson, you know, who play on the right side of the offensive of the uh, of the offensive line, you see them everywhere together. They just like hang out side by side wherever they go because that's the way the, the positions they play at. A game that was 18-14 at halftime has been just dominated by North Dakota State. Northern Iowa's had its chances, especially in that third quarter, a drop touchdown pass certainly would have been a touchdown from Jalen James a couple of other things did not go their way certainly the turnover early in the second half really hurt and it is homecoming here in Fargo <laughs> and yes it's been snowy and not the most pleasant conditions but here are the new inductees for North Dakota State and that includes Aaron Peterson you know, man that was a kicker here Todd Fuller was a national champion in wrestling in the division two days <laughs> and Jamie Barry Adams you and I both know her very well Yep, from Watertown. She's got a bunch of guys in her family that are really good baseball players, really good baseball coaches. This copyrighted broadcast is property of North Dakota State University. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or distribution without the consent of NDSU is strictly prohibited. We do have a new quarterback for you and I, Jacob Keller, in on this series. All the quarterbacks on the roster are young. Keller's the oldest one. He's a sophomore. And he was a wide open competition for quarterback throughout the spring, throughout fall camp. And give credit to McElveen as a guy that came in as a walk on for winning the job. Showed the most. Here's that uh, carries from Nick McCabe, freshman running back from Caledonia, Minnesota. And there's Jasir Cox, who's had an opportunity to play now last week and this week, coming back from an knee injury he sustained in the opener at Target Field against Butler, brother of Jabril. One more snap in this game should do it. What a second half. North Dakota State. North Dakota State. Also home next Saturday against Missouri State before back-to-back -back road trips to South Dakota State and Youngstown. Meanwhile, you and I returns home to take on South Dakota, and the Coyotes look like they are on their way to, the, way to 2 0 in the Missouri Valley. A big lead at Missouri State at halftime. That'll do it from here in the Fargo Dome as North Dakota State wins its 27th straight game, second longest streak in FCS history. And that man right there, Matt Entz, is 6 0 as a head coach as he shakes hands with Mark Farley and some others on the staff he knows at Northern Iowa. Trey Lance, just another day at the office, 145 yards, passing three touchdowns. He also ran for 83 yards on the day. I'd have to say at this point after the game, there's similar thoughts from last week after the game, just on how 
Illinois State came in with a defense that it was real proud of. Same thing for Coach Farley. The, uh, the, the top side, I mean, the reason they won the Youngstown game was defense last week. And now NDSU just physically took over in the second half. The Bison continue to wear people out. Josh Hayes, a strong game. Three pass breakups today, including a big hit and a forced fumble early in that third quarter. And North Dakota State able to capitalize on that, move ahead. And really didn't look back after that. North Dakota State 492 total yards on offense after racking up 482 last week. So show your support for the Bison defense as they take on Missouri State. Matt Entz will make his way over to Ryan and Gellner. And now Ryan is with the North Dakota State head coach. 347 rushing yards. You wore them down again, coach. Yeah, that was the plan, and we talked about it all week long. Uh, we knew that they were really good, but they were had only four to five guys and so if we just needed to get stops on defense so we could wear them out and he saw second half we did a much better job on defense of getting off the field and allowing our rams and our tight ends to really start leaning on their their front you mentioned the offensive line every week they seem to be getting better and better they're playing at a high level they are they're, they're having fun and that's that's what's most most encouraging to me is you see guys smiling uh Coach Blazik is a character, and so it's easy to smile when that's your position, Coach. But you know, we, we got eight or nine different guys that can play. You know, I don't know if it's it, we're a solid. We got great depth at that position. Defensively, might get lost in this one, but they played a really good second half. It had a better on third down. Didn't give up the ex gave up a big play once, but we held them out, of, kept them out of the end zone. Did a nice job, you know, miss a field goal. Red zone defense again. You, you force people to kick field goals, you usually have a pretty good opportunity to win. Pretty good way to finish the birthday week. Congratulations and happy birthday. I appreciate it. I'm still 33. Hard to believe. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Congrats, Coach. This guy's back upstairs. Head coaching has aged him quickly, oh, hasn't yeah. it? <laughs> and by the way, folks, the interstate on I-94 has just opened. Opened at 4 o'clock today. Still, please be careful if you are traveling today, especially around the construction zone in Valley City. And it's still a little iffy between Jamestown and Steele. So be careful if you are driving today, getting out on the roads here this afternoon. A message we're passing along from the North Dakota Highway Patrol. 46-14 is your final. North Dakota State blanking Northern Iowa in the second half, outscoring the Panthers 28 to nothing. We're back to talk about it more after this timeout. All across the KDOI Camp YR Bison Television Network. Welcome back, Ryan, Sean, Lee, Timmerman, Ryan Gellner with you at Gate City Bank Field at the Fargo Dome, North Dakota State. 46-14 the final, the Bison move to an impressive 6-0 on the season and now get ready for a matchup with Missouri State next Saturday. And uh, boy, we really felt these two games right out of the shoot in the Missouri Valley Conference play at Illinois State here against Northern Iowa would be big tests. And the Bison outscored both of those teams 83-17. to <laughs> Hmm, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, NDSU is just able to grind physically dominate two really good teams. In fact, in a conversation I had with Randy Hedberg, the quarterbacks coach uh, this week, um, you know, coaches pay no attention to stats. They have absolutely no idea uh, numbers wise that fans and broadcasters. But the, the point of the story is I asked Randy, I said, I go, how many more yards rushing do you think you guys have than your opponents? And he's like, oh. Geez, I know. I, I, and I said, Randy, I'm going to make you guess. <laughs> Throw a number out there. He goes, um, 300 and some. I go, try 970. <laughs> and that was before today. So the Bison right now are over 1,200 yards rushing more than their opponents through the first six games. You're going to win a lot of football games when you control mm -hmm. the line of scrimmage like that. And that's what North Dakota State has done. First half was an interesting start. North Dakota State really got out fast. It was a 15 nothing lead as uh, the Bison went to the air, picked up some big gains big chunks through the passing game before establishing the ground game today. I thought Tyler Roll early in some of these early drives really did a good job of mixing it up and here's a wide open pass down low touchdown Trey Lance gets uh, Phoenix Sproles and gets into the end zone and then they Bison go for two James Hendricks. Second time that Hendricks has gotten a two point conversion he was stopped last week at Illinois State so the issue continues to run that and then McIlvain was under pressure but was able to hang in there and make some throws 
for UNI, but a couple of missed field goals really hurt the Panthers, especially the one in the first half. You can't come up empty. You can't come close in the scoring position against NDSU and come away with zero. Lance continuing to air it out. Watson, Beautiful. great catch in the back of the end zone, getting a foot down. Pretty good coverage. But Watson, his second touchdown reception in as many weeks. Northern Iowa, a little trickeration here. Did not work as James Hendricks comes up with the pick. On the Deion McShane, he took a couple of big pops today. There was one there and then one in the second half as well from Josh Hayes. But give credit to Northern Iowa. Down 15 to nothing. Comes up with a turnover of their own. Very opportunistic here as NDSU comes up with a miscue. I know you're going to say that uh, Lubke fumbled it, but really if you ask uh, Trey Lance, he'll, he'll take the blame for that one. He did not give his fullback an opportunity to grab that ball very well. But the Bison defensive ends played fairly well, and he's, he was the go-to guy. Getting into the end zone on the backside, took advantage of what Coach Entz said was a blown coverage. Well, Isaiah Weston was a busy man today and uh, made a lot of big plays down the field. Adam Cofield, a couple of nice runs today. He continues to be a guy that gets most of the carries here consistently for the Bison. Leads to a 25-yard field goal. Griffin Crosa missed his first field goal as a collegiate player later in this game. And then McElvain throwing it up to his big man again. Just winning on, winning on the outside. And, and at halftime, we were like, geez, I, I think you and I should just do more of that. They tried it a little bit in the second half, but McElvain was unable to get it down and with timing. And the Bison played a little bit more too deep in that second half as well. Trey Lance was asked to carry the ball a little bit more this week. And boy, he delivered. 83 rushing yards today on the ground for Trey Lance. I remember Coach Roll said, hey, we only ran power read once in the last three years against these guys, and he went to it today a lot more. There you see Johnson able to turn the corner, move it up, and then another missed field goal. And North Dakota State did have an 18-14 lead at halftime. And then, you know, North Dakota State, I think, came out in that second half, got the early turnover, and that's where the tide started to go the other way much like it did in the first half for you and i the turnover led to a touchdown you get fired up and, and things uh, rolled so much better for the panthers in that first half just the opposite happened to you and i in that second half they have the turnover off the really nice hit from uh, josh hayes the bison turned that into a touchdown and then the physicality kind of took over from from that point and that happened early in the second half kind of took to, took over from there and NDSU's uh, offensive line was able to grind. Let's take a look at the final stats sponsored by the North Dakota certified seed producers and you'll see a pretty lopsided uh, numbers on one side or the other and really the one that stands out the most is the rushing yards LT. Yeah 347 rushing yards now the Bison had 388 on the ground against Butler at Target Field you, you go yeah but you, to do that again against you and I and have uh, a, a, an advantage on the ground uh, of a of you know of that much of a difference and then in the second half the third down defense really came to play I think you and I only got one third down conversion in the second half one out of eight I believe it was and at that point when you and I couldn't stay on the field and then they couldn't stop the running game and that's a recipe for a uh, for a Bison win and in today a Panthers loss and for North Dakota State the Bison continue to play really well on third down come up with big third down conversions coming into this game 54% on third down, which is among the best in the FCS. They were 7 of 13 today. We all will step aside after those stats, sponsored by the North Dakota Certified Seed Producers, and be back with your second half highlights and a look around the Missouri Valley. You're watching the KBLY Camp Way, our Bison Television Network. Ryan Sean Lee Timmerman back with you. North Dakota State celebrating its ninth straight homecoming victory here this afternoon after a 46-14 victory over the University of Northern Iowa. Ryan Geller is standing by with one of the offensive linemen that paved the way for the Bison running backs today. Yeah, Brian, one of the, I guess you could call it, road graders for the Bison today. Another huge game on the ground for North Dakota State. 347 rushing yards. Boy, the Rams up front were moving things. Then the running backs were playing pretty well. Oh, yeah, definitely. I love to see that. I mean, we give uh, the coach crap all the time about how we need to reach that 300-yard mark. I think last week we were at, like, 292 or something. We just want to get it. So, yeah, these guys play physical up front, but uh, inevitably they weren't able to stick with us the whole game and just the physicality of the whole offensive line. I mean, I do, I do my part, but the rest of the guys, they're so physical and they play with the energy. And then the running backs just uh, run right behind us and they break tackles. And, yeah, it was a perfect game for us. So. 
there seems to be a new sense of energy. I don't know if it's Coach Blazik or what it is, but there's this new sense of energy. You guys keep getting better week after week. Yes, Blazik definitely has contributed to that energy. Um, he's a great coach in that way. Um, but Cordell Volson, he played last year. He steps into this role of starting, and I don't know what triggered him over the summer, but, man, this man is on fire. I mean, he's getting in people's faces all the time. He's putting people on the ground. He's screaming and yelling nonstop. I just got done screaming and yelling with him in the locker room. He's on fire right now, so... How tight is your group? Because we don't hear a lot from your group, but how tight are those offensive linemen? Uh, really tight. I mean, I know me and Cordell were roommates, so we're really tight. Uh, Carson's also our roommate. So technically, I mean, Kubis rotates in there. I mean, four of us live in one house, and Zeej is also kind of that leader that we look up to. So he takes care of us all, and we all just bond together through him. And, yeah, I mean, we're probably one of the tightest-knit groups we have on this team just because of the tradition that we have. So, i got to ask you, as an offensive lineman, on some of those big runs – done with your blocks do you ever get a chance to to look up at the screen or follow the play how's that work from an offensive lineman standpoint um, yeah so we're normally pretty tired I mean we're big guys we're big bodies uh, but like I said I'm kind of a guy who like I'm done with my block I got my guy we're good he scores a touchdown okay I'll jog down slowly to go celebrate but Cordell like I said he's full of energy and he just sprints nonstop. wherever the ball's going just sprint nonstop, and he'll go celebrate he gets so excited so yeah it's kind of a okay I can catch my breath this is awesome we scored and then I'll go celebrate but yeah it just depends which uh which mindset you kind of have in that moment, so. Good stuff, really appreciate it. Congratulations, yeah. keep it going, we'll see you next week. All right, thank you. We'll bring in Josh Hayes as well, who had a good game for the Bison, and uh, Josh with six tackles, a couple of pass breakups, and a big fumble there in the third quarter. Congratulations, first of all, the Nodak Insurance Player of the Game. Yes, sir, thank you, thank you. Take me through that fumble, because that was a big play. The game was tight at the time, first possession of the quarter, and, and uh, you come up with the big hit. I just saw the quarterback, you know, he's running around a little bit, tossed the ball out, and just in the locker room, coach was saying, you know, let's get the half started, let's get it started. So I saw a chance to do that, and I took it. When you hit him, any idea that the ball had sprung loose? No idea at all. I just kind of got up and looked around, and then I saw it on the ground. So I thought he honestly just didn't catch it, and then I didn't hear any whistles. Saw people jumping on it, and then, then I figured out it was a fumble. Defensively, you guys played well the entire game. The offense turned it over. They turned it into points. Uh, but... 14 points in the first half and then come back and pitch a shutout in the second half against a pretty good offense. We just need to finish a game, you know. That's what we talk about all the time, finish, finish, finish. So, you know, uh, coming out of halftime, we just had to make sure we were up first, so we had to make sure we came out and executed and set the tempo for the rest of the game. Personally, i got to ask you about this. I'd be uh, mistaken if I didn't, but you became a father for the first time uh, just a couple weekends ago. Congratulations. How's life changed in the, in the first couple of weeks here? Honestly, it's made me more focused. I just had to be able to spread my time out to make sure I can call back home and see her a little bit, get a smile on my face, but it's great. It's great. Fun to watch her grow up in just the last couple of days, I can imagine. It's crazy. So much growth that you see just day by day. It's amazing. You'll enjoy it for the next 15 or 16 years, and then it'll get a little crazy, but then life will get fun again. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, back upstairs to you. All right, thanks so much, and congratulations to Josh. It's been a busy couple of weeks for that young man as well, and he is the Nodak Insurance Company uh, player of the game. And defensively, North Dakota State in that second half, LT did a tremendous job uh, of shutting down some of the things that Northern Iowa really likes to do. They took their shots, but NDSU did a nice job hanging in there. Yeah, and, and you know, some of those 50-50 things when they don't go your way, and the Bison were able to, to take advantage of that. But uh, we talked to Dylan, and I want to go back and just, just uh, tell a quick little story about uh, early on how I knew uh, through one of the coaches that Dylan Radens was going to be good. And it came from Randy Hedberg, and Randy said, oh, you should see this guy's feet. He's going to be so good because we played kickball the other day. And you should have seen how good he was. So what you don't understand is how big are those guys, but offensive linemen play the game with their feet and with their hands. You have to have that size. And when, when uh, Radens showed Hedberg all that ability playing kickball, he said he's going to be a great offensive lineman. And he is. He is. <laughs> North Dakota State finishing strong here today, pulling away for the 46-14 victory. We'll step aside and be back to wrap things up from here at the Fargo Dome after this. Back to put a wrap on this one from the Fargo Dome. 46-14 is your final. Brian Sean, Lee Timmerman, and Ryan Gellner with you. And uh, North Dakota State improving to 6-0 on the season and will host Missouri State coming up next Saturday afternoon at 2.30, pregame at 1.30. Second half highlights, let's take a look at those. And uh, North Dakota State got the big turnover early, and that really started the momentum, LT. Yeah, this is the play that uh, Ryan just talked with uh, Hayes about, Josh coming up with a big hit. 
as uh, Marquise Bridges covers it up and the Bison are able to convert that into points. And it did not take them very long as Gindorf picks up his fifth catch of the year and his fifth touchdown of the year. Tied with Isaiah Weston now for most reception touchdowns in the Missouri <laughs> Valley Football Conference. McIlvain hung in there, continued to fire downfield, and you know, give Weston credit. He made some nice plays and nice adjustments on the football in the air. Yeah, he's, he's a good one. I mean, he did the same thing against Iowa State and uh, a lot of the players that uh, the games that the Panthers have played. Here's one, though, that the timing of that play downfield was thrown off, so Hayes had some safety help. And this one was called wide to the right, and boy, it was sure close to going in, but the officials said it was no good, and that took uh, three points off the board, and then North Dakota State really got the ground game going, and this young freshman, 95 yards today on nine carries. Yeah, he had 95. Cofield went over 100. I like this out of the, the triple stack, two tight ends in front of uh, Cofield as he gets down to the one, and the Bison will punch it in right after this. Boy, you see <laughs> Flater Maybe getting Flater pushed back into the end zone by Nash Jensen, or was that Austin Avery in there? I couldn't tell. Uh, Making but the key block, and then Trevor Height continues to make plays in the return game. Yeah, among the nation's leaders in that uh, department, there Height had another good one. And as you just continued to lean as Cofield got most of the work, led the team in carries, and, and then broke free. Yep. Uh, this one will end up uh, in the end zone, but the downfield blocking, Christian Watson uh, throwing the block downfield. Uh, that's one thing, too. I mean, Watson's always been a good blocker, and, of course, Phoenix Proles is a good blocker, but when your wide receivers uh, get some blocks, there's Mathis with a block on the edge as well. In uh, NDSU's uh, uh, scheme of things, if you're a wide out, you must block. Kobe Johnson putting the icing on the cake with a 49-yard touchdown run at North Dakota State. Runs away from Northern Iowa. 46-14 is your final. Taking a look at some other scores around the Missouri Valley Conference today. Western Illinois losing in overtime to Indiana State. I thought that was an overtime. 20-10 South Dakota rolling right now over North Dakota State's next opponent. 38-7 Missouri State really struggling to run the football and the Coyotes well at, over 400 and yards. And that's at home. That's down in Springfield where uh, the Coyotes are, are taking care of Mo State. There's an interesting game. South Dakota State on the road at Youngstown State. The Penguins, bad taste in their mouths after a road loss at Northern Iowa last week and without likely without Nathan Mays, their starting quarterback in that game, got injured late. And then Illinois State will try to rebound after a 37-3 home loss to Southern Illinois later tonight at 6 p.m. Here's the schedule now for North Dakota State. The Bison, Two very impressive wins here at Over Valley opponents. Missouri State at home, and then the two games against South Dakota State and Youngstown State back-to-back -back weeks. Really thought that these first two games were going to be uh, tough games, and all you got to do is look at the, the, the 37 points and the 46 points, and uh, obviously they weren't. Uh, NDSU took care of Illinois State and uh, you and I here today. Uh, most states coming in here, but then you're right. You got back-to-back -back the, uh, the bus trip down to uh, Brookings and then out to... Uh, out to Youngstown, out in Eastern Ohio. So, uh, and then with Western, USD, and SIU, you would have to think if you can roll, get through, you know, those back-to-back -back road games, you should, in some form or fashion, be able to ease into the playoffs and earn a first-round bye. And certainly Southern Illinois, opponent that's been off the schedule for a while. First time we've been to Carbondale in quite some time. Missouri State, meanwhile, the Bears coming in here next Saturday at 2.30, and it's been a struggle, frankly, for Dave Seckel and company so far this season. Uh, yeah, that score we just showed you on what USD is uh, doing down in Springfield, uh, that's got a whole lot. Of, without seeing the game yet or watching the highlights, this is a whole lot of ugly going on uh, with the Bears right now. See what happens next Saturday afternoon when North Dakota State 6-0 hosts the Missouri State Bears. Thanks so much for joining us all across the KVOI KFYR Bison Television Network. Thanks to all of you who were able to watch and were snowed in. Our thoughts are with you in Devil's Lake and Minot, Langdon, a lot of those areas that are digging Jamestown, out from two plus yeah. feet of snow. It has been uh, a rough 72 hours, but uh, we will dig out and I believe some 50s in the forecast are coming ahead. For Lee Timmerman, Beth Hool, Ryan Gelman, Kyle Emanuel, Alex Egan, I'm Ryan Sean saying so long from the Fargo Dome. We'll see you next Saturday afternoon. North Dakota State is 6-0 with a homecoming victory. 46-14 is the final. So long. See you next time.